Um, and the echo is something we just we don't have to deal with. But I have to say, when we listened, it wasn't, it wasn't too bad, you know, on the other end. So. We just bought a brand new laptop from COVID so that we, I have this laptop that I use that, that is the pound, and then we have bought a brand new one during COVID. That's got to be this setting someplace. Yeah. So it's, it's just probably in a setting, like you said. I'll email TJ tomorrow and talk to TJ at Vermont Digital and ask him for how he's doing. So I'm not sure if maybe the next meeting we do another trial just before we, just to kind of keep trying to work the bugs out. It's going to be easier to manage one person than 12 if we, if we can't get it working better. So it may take us a couple meetings to work the bugs out. Because I, you know. I'm pretty relevant. I know, it's true. I know, I know you're a handful, but that's all right. I can't broadcast from my iPad. Yep. No, I know, but it, we I have. Just, yeah, you know, and I'm sure you can. But it'd be nice to figure out why we can't. Because oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I've never used the projector or whatever had to, so I don't know. All right, we'll call the meeting to order. Six o two. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there anything that needs to be amended or changed no. from its existing? Move to no. approve the agenda no. as written. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right. Uh, first, we do have an appointment this evening. Um, so, Patrick, welcome. Hello. <laughs> um, so, um, Patrick has um, a request at the board. Did everybody get the mm -hmm. information in the packet in regards to his uh, re uh, his place on uh, Liberty Stable Road, 21. So I gave you Patrick's letter and then the letter that I had sent to Patrick um, and his wife Elaine on June 19th, 2020. So it kind of gives you a history of the water issue, looks like, because uh, Patrick had had a deal with the town, then town manager Keith Arlen, dated June 2016 and he requested for a moratorium on utility fees until July of 2017 um, in hopes he'd have one apartment completed by then. And then in October 2017, uh, then town manager Greg Maggard removed any charges incurred from May 2016 to 2017. And um, so it looks like you've had a few years of no water bill. Um, maybe since 2016, since you, uh, June, maybe 2016, since you um, made an agreement with Keith, right? Other than uh, uh, June 14th, 21, which was $352. Right. So, so if you could, just to catch us up, because, you know, the boards and the town government changes often, as we all know, um, could you just give us a little history on, on the property itself, of, yep. about what you purchased it, when you purchased it, what you're planning on doing with it, and then kind of more specifically what you're looking for the board to do for you? Uh, I purchased it, purchased it in 2009, I believe. It's been sitting vacant for... I think since 2004, um, I was in the process of uh, renovating the property across the street, 20 livery stable. Um, the plan was to move on to 21 afterward. Uh, once I get into it there, it, there were a lot of structural deficiencies. Um, pretty much everything was it wasn't going to be a quick turnaround for apartments. Uh, foundation was washed out in several places. Um, all the all the beams in the uh, the front area were completely rotted out. The first floor was it was you could reach your hand in and just tear out chunks of 
of wood. So that was all reframed. One thing led to another. So it's been a very, very long process just to get it structurally sound, which it's pretty much at now. But now it's the process of putting it back together. So all the plumbing, all the electric, all the, uh, the finishes have to be put in. And uh, just, it's just been a very, very time consuming process. So there's never been any water used or any sewage used. All the, all the, all the pipes have collapsed or been, it's like everything's ripped out now anyway. But nothing was ever use, useful. So um, I, I'm hoping going forward that uh, my goal right now is just to get, just to get rid of it because I've had it now for 10 years. There's been issues with my health and, and some other things that have kind of um, just slowed the project down. The, the, uh, the overall feasibility of building five or six apartments uh, just doesn't make a lot of financial sense. So my plan now was to kind of divide it into three separate units and perhaps sell them as condominium. It's really the only way to make any kind of sense for a financial return on it. So my, my goal right now is to get it to a point where somebody will look at it and see the potential in it for doing something like that. Because um, we put it on the market in uh, May, I think, for a very, very, you know, I thought it was a giveaway price of $40,000. And uh, there was little or no interest in it. So. I've got to put, I would say, probably another twenty-five to $30,000 into it to get it to a point where somebody would see the potential in it. So to pay another $5,000 a year uh, for uh, sewer and water is kind of a big chunk of that. Yeah, so it, I mean, just how the current system works anyways is, you know, the, um, and it, it changes a little bit every year, but it's, you know, somewhere close to 70, 70 75% of, of your water rate is built into the fixed rate. So that's all the plumbing, all the people, all the resources up to your curb stop. Um, and then the, you know, the other 25% is your consumption. Um, so it sounds like you've been on, um, has he been on? He hasn't received a bill until recently. And so I think we sent you a bill for, I think you're in, I can't remember if you're in for three apartments for three EUs. How much did you say your bill was, Patrick? I'm sorry. The last one I got yeah. is, for, for like fourteen hundred dollars. Yeah, how much for say just sewer? I think it's four. Total amount is thirteen oh eight fifty. Did it say how much it was just for sewer? Not on this one. Okay, probably on the original one. No. Okay. Like so my guess is one into it. Plus, I think we're at 182 Plus, what's broader? Like, is he paying like a vacancy rate or is he paying the full? I think he's paying the full, but I think he's paying times, he's either paying times three or four units. So, um, because that's the way it's usually set up, is each place obviously is assigned X amount of EUs by apartment. Right. So, and I know his had been dropped. So, I think that you're either at three or four EUs. So basically what you're being charged is a vacancy rate per EU. Um, another option possibly is for the select board to charge you one EU for the entire building. So instead of paying for apartment that you haven't constructed yet, they could pay one, they may, an option would be to charge you one EU um, if they're gonna charge you for um, the entire building since there's not yet any fixtures, right? So you're not drawing any water. No. Because right now, yeah, you're either being charged for three or four. Look. So, 
and then another potential use of those is to sell as a single family dwelling, so you know, charging for three or four units. Yeah, I mean, so, so usually, you know, I mean, the board has five voices, but, you know, typically to keep things consistent, what we've done at the board, at least since I've been on it, kind of how the oldest one on it, is to be consistent is we've done a couple of different methods. So there's either, in your case, um, is going on to a, you know, a reserve where, where you're not paying the full amount of the water, you're paying for what, what we, you know, call the, um, the you know, the, um, vacancy rate which is a uh, like 70 percent of what the total amount is um, we've had a couple of cases where we've had buildings become inhabitable either through fire or I think we had one that got hit by a truck and there was a couple of you know odd and ends things where we've actually taken those off of service completely if I remember right does that sound right yeah and then and then we've had the most recent where we've had um, some recent here in the last two years of new owners that have bought uh, buildings that, you know, were beyond their time and has come to the board to request a period of reprieve from their water bill while they do the necessary uh, modifications to get it to rentable or sell it or, you know, whatever type of thing. So we've done those things. Um, so it, it sounds like, and I just didn't, uh, just want to make sure I get it right. So it sounds like what you're, you're asking the board is for a complete reprieve of your water and sewer until when? Until you sell it, or right, I guess, because. Well, if you were going to put a timeline on it, I would say April, because I was asking to have the building reassessed by the, the assessors anyway. I've made some changes to the square footage. Um, the building is smaller now. Um, the, whether or not it has three floors, so now in order to kind of uh, to uh, utilize all three floors, we need a sprinkler system. So the uh, um, the consideration of eliminating the third floor to eliminate the cost of having to install a, a sprinkler system is also a, uh, something that's in the, in the mix. So it has been, um, you know, because I'm trying to do this on my, on my own with, with work and stuff, it's, it's, it's been a little, little time consuming. So I've, I've taken a sabbatical or leave, leave of absence from work uh, for, three months for the last each five years to, to work on it. Um, and it's just kind of an ongoing, so I really should have had much more dialogue with you guys about the building than, than I have, but the, the fact of the matter is I'm kind of at a point now, the only really major structural issue left is the, the rear roof, which I'm in the process of carrying off and fixing. And I think once that's done, then the building is pretty much 90 to 100 percent structurally sound again, and um, I'm hoping by April that there will be functioning water and functioning electric in at least one floor, one level, the second floor, so that it could be so utilized as a living space or close to being utilized as a living space. So that's what I'm asking for, basically April. Oh, I can. So the um, I can I looked back, so I looked at Bob the software. So you're currently being billed for four units, and you were being you're being billed. He's not being billed a vacancy because he hadn't met the select board to get the vacancy rate yet. So um, that's one of the. So that that dwelling is four EUs, and he's being. Well, right, he's being charged for four. Charged for the four because four. yeah. So because, um, yeah, because I don't have, because per your ordinance, I don't have the authority to give somebody a vacancy rate. So they have to come in front of the select board to deal. So the um, that one is getting 
But there was, so there was nothing when there was how many in that building? Well, I don't know, but just right now, that's what that property you're asking about is. So there was no billing into October of No, I just barely built him. Yeah, so he hasn't yeah, so received a bill since now. 2017 so until so now. So the balance right now is well, it's due Right, April because... 20, uh, in June. Yeah, yeah, I just buried it. So we just, when we reconfigured, we just put it back on. So it was the first bill he's received in many years. And um, so, uh, and we knew he wasn't connected. However, it was finally, this was like, you have to come to the select board and, and, and deal with yeah. this. So, so we're looking um, to erase that bill and then continue on until that's your choice. You could you could erase that bill and you could put him on vacant sewer water, make him pay one EU. I mean that's well, what somebody that's, else in town pays. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. one EU for the whole building vacancy. Yeah. So um, you know that's your call. It just has been a long time. So obviously, yeah. as Patrick said, there just needed to be some communication between yeah. the board and yeah. um, so that's your answer. You're still using yeah. infrastructure. I'm not sure how that. Well, you're using the pipes and stuff that go to your house, but even though I you're not, I mean, you're not you're utilizing them in what way? You're not utilizing them. You are. You have access. They're to, there. Yeah, the town has to maintain them uh, to your dwelling, whether you use water or not. Well, well you That's know, the infrastructure, you know, needing to be. Uh, Supported in a, in a I really don't have I can't find fault with that. Uh, the utilities charge you line fees, infrastructure fees. Right. They don't generally charge you for them unless you're utilizing your service. But uh, but that's why we have the vacancy. So rate. Right. yes, and the that's what that's basically is. what that covers. I'm just clear. <laughs> yeah. 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 And what is the vacancy rate? Um, I It's around eighty-five dollars. Yeah. Um, it's um, yeah. Water. It's one forty-six fifty-four for sewer and ninety-three oh two. So the total bill is um, two thirty-nine fifty-six per quarter for one EU. For one EU. For one, EU. one, for one. one vacant EU. I mean, it seems to me like at a minimum, bumping into one EU because this is not a multiple unit. There, there is an ability right now for it to be multiple units. Um, I mean, I spent a lot of time thinking about this issue today, and I think that one of the big things is, and we're sort of stuck as a board, right? We have the issue of we've got to support a water system mm -hmm. that has minimal users, but we also really need to support people like Patrick making infrastructure improvements. We have a lot of buildings mm -hmm. that need this, have needed it for decades, and if we don't as a board support that, we're in the same position that this town has been in for decades of <laughs> under, under supported infrastructure and then people like Patrick won't invest in it and so thus we're, we're stuck in that terrible cycle. Yeah, um, I think that's why you guys have been in the habit of giving people like six months reprieve saying, okay, we'll give you six months. I think that that's what you just did for the people that bought on Main Street. That's right. an existing as kind of, here's yeah. Yeah, six months reprieve and then they come back and in this case there's been an ongoing reprieve but um but yeah we're just basically trying to find all the eus and have that conversation so that as you said it's a closed system and what do we do with the current balance right you'll have to make that determination as well <clears throat> yep that would be your decision but looking at some consistency of what we've done for others in patrick's case is some of these other dwellings that have the potential of multiple uh, EU usages over time once it's completely rehabbed but is going through the process right now looking at it with Teresa's software it looks like we've been charging one EU of usage for like you know the whole building rather than when they're under yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. right and that's that seems logical to me to right at a minimum bump down to one EU and then have the discussion of what do we do from there about the current bill and then the next six months, like I think, I think sort of almost separating them into two separate issues is. is right. I think if you're going to drop it to one EU, then one EU may be retroactive to this current balance. 
When, when, when was this bill? June. Uh, out? June. Yep, because it would have, or eight, it would have been July, because I think it was, um, or maybe it was June. I'm trying to remember this. The billing cycle is a little funny. So we end on June. So the bill he received would have covered. Um, there was a bill from June 16th, 21, 30201, which I believe was paid. Yeah. So, um, 30201. That's a one, that's one, one EU. That's one EU. Yeah. So was that, that's not, is that your other property? Uh, no, we don't have any other property. Oh, okay. Uh, just Actually, that's an old number that's 308. Yeah, that was an old bill, must be, yeah. But yeah, so the bill that you received, I can tell you, I just looked in the software, so it was for four. So that's a motion you could make, Paul, sure. So this is something that throw in as much as you have a problem paying. Yeah, one of you. Right. I understand the town's problem. I, I don't envy you. <laughs> To go back to Chris's point, um, my recollection is we have done a full abatement when things are under massive renovation and close to coming online, right? I mean, the one that's really sticking in my head is um, Dylan McCullough's property. Yeah. We, we did a full abatement, and so to sort of keep with consistency, even if it's separate from how many EUs, um, you know, to to from here do an abatement to whatever the you know the six month quarter from here is so if it's April I know the billing for water's a little we bill in the middle of the quarter right yeah so yeah exactly so if, bill, so if you bill so the first bill you receive in August covers July August and September so depending you could either abate his bill in, yeah entirely or you could abate it down to one EU or you could, um, so you have a couple options. But yes, you're right, they're, they're funny like that, because right. you are, you build. So just saying April is, I feel like that's not. Yeah, well, because it would be, let's see, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, and then your next bill would include April, May, and June. So, um, but in the past, you have, yes, you've abated, and then you've given them six months, and then they have to come back and update you. And but you it have doesn't, done that it doesn't sound though. like you're really thinking of having it occupiable you're thinking right. just Not get it to the point where like some somebody else will it's going to be yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm at a point where yeah you want somebody to come in and and take it off your hands and finish the yeah but in this case there is no end date for no uh, so you could just part. abate it and then just put it the building itself on one eu vacant sewer and water and if you were forward if you just wanted to put it on one eu at at the at vacancy the rate from that you know Moving forward, that's fine with me. Okay. Because, you know, in this case, we, well, not we, but the town in one way or another has kind of abated his utilities right. over the last several years. Yeah, because so, you've never built them. Yeah. yeah, it's not like it's a yeah. new abatement right. where right. we're giving like two quarters yeah, to done. get it all done, you know? Exactly. Um, and I can tell you what it's So if we're talking about go to the one EU, that would that be at the vacancy rate or at the full one EU? What were you thinking? What was that? I was hoping for the vacancy rate. Mm -hmm. So that was the whatever, 200? It sounds like it's shut off at. Yeah, it is. It's not even piped into his house. This is the amount it has to. If you would need to abate it, that's what you're looking at abating. I, I like Lindley's idea of two separate votes. Abating. If you abate his bill, that's the amount. That's how it's the one that gets sent to him. Mm -hmm. Voting first to, and I would move, that we uh, consider that a one e, a one unit uh, facility. That's after property. Keeping it one unit. No, it's not. That's the whole thing. So you just okay. made a motion, Gene, to Make it move it one, one e unit, unit property. Uh, vacant. Not you just one not dealing with any okay. vacancies or abatements. I just want to make say it one that's a one unit property. Okay, so that's his motion. I would second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so one EU property. Now I think now it's just what what do we want to do with that? Is, you know, do we run it as a, a vacancy for now? Um, and then what do we do with the bill that was given? Um, well, I was going to say, I, I think if Patrick is comfortable with the vacancy rate, that seems like sort of the win-win the for all parties, right? And the town is at least still covering its fixed costs, and 
it's not you know, breaking his budget to be able to continue renovations. Um, but that's separate from the second part of your question of what do we do with the, I mean, can we? So that means we take the, the existing bill and change it to one EU. Right. Can we do that retroactively? Yeah, sure, so, of course, yep. Change it to the, to the vacancy. See, right, one for one EU. Yeah, so I could reduce it. So basically I could write off the balance. They, could write off part of the bill and leave it. So is that your motion, Lindley, to make to um, make a two-part motion to move him to one vacancy rate retroactive? So you're going to abate a portion of the 1308.50 and put him down to one vacant EU for sewer and water and leave that building at one vacant sewer water until there's more development there in a much less wordy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I, my follow-up question is Dave brought up an interesting point. Um, so you were saying you you paid the June and July bill, the thirteen fourteen hundred one? No, no, no oh, we didn't. No, no. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. No, no, yeah. Um, no, he has a current. There's a current balance on that of thirteen oh eight fifty. I think to be consistent, we need to. Uh, I mean, I'm in favor of this general idea, but I think to be consistent with what we've done, it needs to be a. May not call it an end date, but a date to revisit us. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. you know, if something comes up in April, yeah, that's fair. Not ready to do whatever. Right. You need to come back because if, as of April, we're going to say, okay, we're going back to full thing. Sure. Well, unless we hear from you and we've talked about it again. I guess my only counter to that is if we're moving into one and a vacancy rate, he has to come in to have the water turned back on. At, uh, at any point in the future, and so well, that's true. Yeah. So, so would that so be... prompt him having to come in when, whenever that's ready? One unit, three units doesn't matter. Because you do have other buildings um, that are undeveloped that you charge that have the opportunity to be much more, but you charge them for one vacant EU because they're not currently using any water. So you do have that existing situation now. So it would be make Patrick fair to blend into the, what you currently are doing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, in English, in English. Okay, so <laughs> I moved. Let's see if I can do this. Wow. I can tell you what the rate is and we can just do the math. I or, or we just. To put Patrick on the vacancy rate and abate, retroactively abate the June. Difference? Quarter, or the, yeah, the difference of the June quarter. June 2021 uh, quarter bill, and then effective moving forward. Okay, so so basically you're moving. It's fine. You're going to put him on a vacancy rate. The motion is that you're going to move Patrick to a vacancy rate for one EU and abate retroactively abate the difference between the four full EUs and the one vacant EU. Correct. Perfect. I can do that. No problem. Okay, that's the motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what happened. <laughs> so you got $10,000 for it. Only yeah. <laughs> so they're going to, uh, I'm going to make a all um, go in and we'll, they're going to obey all of the bill except for the one vacant EU that you want. So I'll remove that interest and penalty. You'll just pay what's due. I'll email you a new bill. Yep, and then moving forward, you'll just be charged one vacant EU for water and sewer. And then as you develop the property, you know, let us know, or once you, or you sell it or whatever, just shoot me out an email, Patrick, and keep us in the loop. Yep. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. Thank you for coming in. Yeah. Appreciate that. Do you mind if I find out who everybody is? Some <laughs> I'm not really familiar with town government. I know, I know Teresa, I know Dave Eddy. I'm so. Lindley Rayner. Okay. Chris Jarvis. Hey, Chris Jarvis. Paul Valley. Paul Valley. Jean Krause. Mm -hmm. You are? She's taking the minutes for us. It's just lovely to do so. <laughs> we find it, so. so that concludes my business. It does. Right. Good to go. Thank you so much. Yeah, take care, Patrick. See ya. Good luck. Hopefully, we'll be farming in the future. There you go. All right. All right.
The only thing I would say while we still have our water hats on is maybe Therese needs to go look at a few of them in there to make sure that well, we some of them that I looked at there that are yeah. on the same Well, we path. review them. Tim and I go through all the yeah. EUs every year, and we send out to the, we do um, a mailing, so everybody that has more than one unit gets a thing. They tell us whether or not they have a grease trap, what was the day they cleaned it, what their right. uses are, so some things are looked at. But, um, yeah. so we'll go and I know we've done a really good job over the last couple We're of years trying to, find all the EUs, trying to get basically. it current and have a formal system, but yeah. there's still a little couple stragglers out there that we I could probably... So. And that's um, kind of part of the reason that he got a bill was because he'd been off so long and right. we hadn't heard from him. So I knew what would get his attention was a bill. Why does he have those charges re uh, abated by yeah. Uh, previous? Yeah, so he got a bill. Yeah, I, never, I don't remember that. that ever coming. Uh, uh, well, of course, I guess it depends on when they abated it. But yeah. Yeah. I came on right at the end of Keith there and I don't remember. I think that they just did it. I think that they had managers done it. But uh, what we did was we ended up, because some people we hadn't heard from, but I knew what would get their attention was a bill. And it, and it did. Usually does, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. All right. All right. So we'll move on to public comments. If there is anything uh, anybody wants to bring up that's not currently on the agenda for this evening, now is the time to do it. Yes, Jesse. Only if this is, uh, Lily is being so wonderful and we're trying to work the bugs out and and it's probably gonna take another meeting or so of somebody of that until we're trying to work out the hybrid aspect and right now it's, uh, uh, Orca is doing the video and the audio um, but what we were unable to do tonight was connect the new town laptop to the older um, projector, so we're still working the bugs out, so we're not going public until we can figure out Lily, um, bless her very much, is willing to participate, see how the audio was, how was it going, and so we're going to give it a few, you know, a couple meetings to sort out all the bugs. I missed the last meeting, but did it come to, uh, was there like a funding with BRI situation that happened? No, we actually have the laptop as ours, we have the projector as ours, and so Orca was willing to help us since they come anyways, do the audio and the video, so we didn't, hopefully I'm having to make an outlay of cash. I, I'm going to have to talk, well, besides the Zoom, um, but we'll have to talk to Vermont Digital to see, I don't know if I'm just missing a cord or what, so we'll see. But um, luckily Zach from um, Orca was able to make it work through his old Mac tonight, but... So, just working the bugs out, Jesse. <laughs> we will also appreciate if there is a volunteer on a regular basis or multiple volunteers on a rotating basis who could monitor the Zoom feed while we are in meeting. Uh, that frees the select board to do the business. So, take that to heart. Um, because right now we have the, Chris and I are monitoring, so if Lily sends a message in the chat, we're reading it so we can, so, so far she said it's great, she can hear. <laughs> and she's going right at those dishes too. She is, and she, yeah. we're watching Lily do the dishes. She's so. watched the same dish six times. It's <laughs> 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 on the replay. There's someone else in the other Yes. Oh, oh, there you go. And then just, just um, remember, uh, just because we have, a uh, new person taking the meeting minutes. They, they may not know all the names, so just make sure that you present your name so we can just make sure you're in the record correctly, that's all. Um, and uh, this is not the meeting, but since I know it's the common period. I, I heard a story recently about a family who was evicted from their home here, and the bank held a sale, and basically they lost $45,000 of equity, and whoever bought it then, you know, put a deck on it and painted it and stuff, and in a matter of weeks sold it for over $200,000. And there are other stories like that floating around about what's happened because of COVID. And I wondered if there had been any discussion or thought about, I live in the town in Colorado, which where I, when I arrived, for $100, you could buy any lot on Main Street. And today, you can't buy a one-bedroom condo for less than a million. So what the community did at one point 
was to adopt a transfer tax to be used for the benefit of the schools and the town and things of that sort. So that at very least, when someone is making a killing, and in some cases very unfair to a family that may be struggling and is basically losing all of their equity there so that someone else can take it in a fire sale and then resell it. Should we give some thought? I was shocked to see, I don't know if anyone here is connected to it, that in last Saturday or Sunday's Valley News, a house on Christian Hill Road was in the paper for $849,000. Two bedroom, two bath house, nice house. But I mean, it's <laughs> that, that makes me nervous. I, you know, and I wonder if there's a way that if people are going to be coming in and paying cash and basically making it very difficult for families to buy property here because someone else comes in and outbids them or you know, offers cash to the people, that the town has some way to, to make some kind of a benefit from just a thought. Just, um, this is not why I came here tonight. <laughs> Currently, I'm not aware of any statute that would allow a municipality to do that. Certainly, Colorado's different. They're more of a county-style government. Um, right now, the tax, any property transfer tax between sale of properties is paid to the state, not to um, the municipalities. Um, and it saddens me to hear that about COVID. We have been pushing any programs that we've had for utilities, electric, why, you know, um, internet connection, um, arrearage programs. The town has received over $16,000 in arrearage to people that have applied through the COVID program for forgiveness of water sewer, and there's still more of that coming for people that have applied and other aid. So it saddens me to hear that someone wasn't able to take avail, you know, avail themselves of some programs that were available. But currently, John, I, I, you know, the only thing that towns can do is maybe set up a TIF district, which is really just an extra sales tax. So currently, I'm not aware of anything, but certainly that would be something to speak to, you know, Kirk White or um, John McBlank on the other channel. Dick, Dick, Dick McCormick, McCormick, thank you so much. Um, Dick McCormick may be on the state level, but but that's um, that's too bad. The only thing that the town gains is when someone turns around and does a sale and you know like that and buys the property. The only thing that happens, the grand list value goes up. But but you're right as far as cash, there's no current tax. But one thing in New York comment is made that has you believe it? Someone paid this putting the property. <laughs> big, you know, 13 acres or something, but it's still, it's ridiculous. And he said, well, you can't buy one bedroom apartment in Manhattan for $850,000. So, it's crazy. The real estate market yeah. certainly is, is crazy in Vermont. We've seen the boom. And but the reason they're coming here is that we have something that the people who live in New York don't have. Mm -hmm. So, you True. Know, we should yeah. not be taking advantage of it. Yeah. That's true. Just something to think about. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to move up to a question. The question of affordable housing is a big one uh, that we all need to address, especially as we move into climate issues, because we're going to have folks who are coming to Vermont as climate migrants. It, it's not just people, it, and that will include people from New York who are trying to cut their expenses. But uh, we're going to see an increased demand on housing, I believe, here in Vermont. And uh, anything we can do to uh, bring awareness and make affordable housing a reality here will be most welcome. Any other public comment? And not on the agenda? Okay. Seeing none. I, I, I'm just thinking. Uh, <clears throat> the affordable housing issue is a lot bigger than what we're just talking about right now because it's, it's, it's everywhere. 
So while we, well, I think it's a great idea, and I, and I would love to do it for folks, if we make, if we do a conscious effort to do something and regulate so that there's affordable housing, in a short time, there'll be none, because the people who are, who are not being regulated will be moving here. I think, in, I think this is a lot bigger than Vermont. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It, it's, it's a national issue. Yeah, and if Vermont does something, certainly. it could hurt us badly. If we were the only one to do it, it could hurt us extremely badly. Everyone, is, and especially the ones who are trying to help the low in, lower income folk and whatnot, because the people from, you know, I've, I've seen it, I know the house you're talking about. I know uh, places that I've seen sold the guy comes in, he's got a wallet that he doesn't care. But it goes, you know, I mean, he's, we, he came from a place, so he, he doesn't care that it's affordable housing. You're, you're absolutely right. It's an issue that's bigger than here, but it is an and issue. I'm, and I'm concerned if we do something, if we do something drastic, that it's just going to hurt everyone. Yeah. Oh, we've seen in Vermont since the late 70s, it's, you know, when the when the sprawl happened from the cities in the 70s, I mean that's when the Burlingtons and stuff started to you know go from well, pastures happened, happened to right in this town, big right cities. In this town, late 60s, the and people was, came from Connecticut yeah. with a boatload of money and yeah. taxes went crazy, and because yeah. they picked a few pieces of property, they come up, they buy all the real estate. And then they change your government and everything else that they want. Well, anyway, it, this and, it becomes, and I think this is bigger. It's long for the ride at that point. This is bigger than that. Yeah. I mean, you started about the news on the national level that housing is a big issue for the country. Sure. All, you know, everybody. And um, I did see, you know, and, and we all know that Governor Scott had mentioned about COVID money coming and trying to do more with, you know, finding more housing, what, you know, an affordable housing, worker housing. And, and trying to deal with the housing shortage in Vermont. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of comes down the pike for that too. But you're right, I mean, yeah. it's nationwide. If I can just uh, toss out one more idea. Mm -hmm. In this county in Colorado, one of the things we did was we created kind of a two-tier real estate market. And to be in the lower tier, you had to work in the county, San Miguel County, for 40 weeks a year to be, and if you were, then, you know, it was like when the program started, um, a former girlfriend of mine had said, you have to buy one of these in this subdivision. It was all what they call affordable housing. And she said, oh, I'm scared. It's a lot of money, $100,000 and stuff. And I said, you gotta do this. Or you won't be able to work here soon. You won't be able to afford the rents and things like that. And she, and the way it was structured was that, okay, you bought the house at $100,000, and then you agreed to be a, a real citizen, not someone who comes up for a couple of weeks a year or something. And then at the time that you want to sell it, you're actually allowed to be making a profit based on the number of years of the set, I forget whether it was five percent a year or whatever, it was sort of like a kind of bank rate for loans on things like that. So that you could, you know, your equity would be growing with inflation or whatever. And that, that that's turned out to be a remarkable thing that's kept the community vital. You know, that's some, I don't know, it's, you know, People think, well, why, why shouldn't you be able to, if you can't afford it, then you do move your property into some, I mean, in some ways it's a version of current use. You know, yeah. it's creating housing for people who live there instead of housing. And also, Dave's absolutely right. I read a week or two ago that we're facing, within the next 10 years, an internal migration something like 1.7 million people because of sea level rise who will have to vacate the Ninth Ward in, in uh, New Orleans and different places. And there will be this pressure. And, you know, we're, we're not 
kind of worry about seal boards here, but dealing with people, and in fact, we need more workers everywhere. So call, call to arms for all Vermonters to buy up every single piece of property in Vermont, <laughs> and you'll be fine. You're sitting on a golden nugget, right? Right, Dave? <coughs> Don't give away. That's, that's, all right. That's, that, I think that's the problem. It's, it's unfortunate. That, I mean, I've seen people that are older than I, you know, 70, 80, whatever, all, been here all their life, and they've you've got a living, and now here, here comes the golden nugget. Yeah. These are, taken. these are the kind of ideas that are worth exploring uh, so that we can say to the people we've talked about, hey, you know, we're going to try to figure out how we can make it happen. Well, maybe, maybe, this is way off track, and we want to see it anyway. Maybe if our legislators hadn't taken all that money out of Social Security and spent it somewhere else, and never brought it back, so that when you drew Social Security, you drew enough to live. So you didn't have to take that golden nugget? Well, it's definitely something that's no different than the retirement issues we have going on in the state. Is it, you know, it's a, it's a good issue to contact your local representation on, you know, leaning on Kurt and, and them and saying, you know, and Dick and saying, what are you, what are you doing about this, you know? Um, because unfortunately in Vermont, like, you know, like Teresa was saying in Vermont, you know, a lot of other um, states have things more county controlled. In Vermont, it's not like that, you know. Um, really, the municipalities have no control hardly at all on anything. You know, it's all handed down. Oh, and, and, uh, you know, it's not like you have a county county control or, you know. No, true. So you're, you're kind of stuck at that point. But, but thanks for bringing it up anyways. And I'm sure uh, it's always good to get that out to your legislators or that time will be coming again pretty short. I do. Actually, this is a bit more than the community because there's a lot of the legislative work is coming from it's not in session. And so there are paid staffers who are there all summer and fall putting together legislation for the people to mark up and then consider. So yep. and I I do take recording some of these key jobs. All right. So Jesse and Owen sitting in the back tonight. They got um, catering license. Looking at doing right. Yeah. See you back there somewhere. That's a request. Hiding. So you guys are looking to do an event at the White Church. Motion to approve the catering permit as as is. Dave. Moved by Dave. Dave Second, Lindley. All in favor? Aye. All right. That was an easy one. How'd you guys make out in the Ford Festival activities? It was awesome. We counted 302 people that came through our lot. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Holy cow. That's good. Did yeah, you have an advance in the rain? How about? It did. Yeah. Excellent. That's good. And here's our sold t-shirts left to sell, or all the t-shirts sold, we you know. Two X's. We got quite a few two X's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Thanksgiving's coming. We're all going to put on a little bit. Yeah. 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 It's very on the corner. You know, certainly yeah. let Kelly know, maybe Mary or Brad, whoever has the quantity, you know, the various quantities, she could put something out on wanted on Facebook or from Christmas to remind people they can still buy them at Babes or Mills Hardware. Christmas is coming. Give a 2x4 Fest t-shirt. That's good to hear. Yeah. Yeah, 
24th for a small dinner. So the fee please be waived, and there's a two hour minimum. So the normal rent for nonprofit would be $50 for two hours up to $150. So, um, mm -hmm. but it wasn't pretty nice of us. Obviously, everybody hasn't been used enough lately, so. Um, that is now a request. Of course, the Rotary does a lot of nice things for the town. Right. Does the board think on that? But if, if we're not going to charge them, why do we have a nonprofit rate? You've had, we, they set the fee schedule, I want to say a couple years ago, maybe. Um, for everything, fees across the board, for zoning, for the pool, for this, and then, and it just happened to have, and it had a fee schedule because I think it probably was depending on maybe what was going on here. Say, um, a larger, like AARP or somebody who's nonprofit, but maybe in a larger sense that could maybe afford the rent because obviously the citizens pay for all the makeup, the heat, the electric, the, so as town hall is used. Um, so I think the select board at the time just set a fee and then was you know, said so they'd kind of look at it on a case by case. I think in the most, you know, in the past, you know, a majority of town related um, been events here have been waived. Yeah. But again, I think it's more yeah. just thinking of. Yeah. yeah. I think it was just thinking of more outside of outside town. That's kind of what I think. Yeah. It was a bigger yeah. thing. Bigger so. nonprofit. I think so. so. I guess just need a motion to. I'll make a motion we waive the uh, fee for the Rotary Club function. On um, October 24th. Okay, just Second. Second by Lindley, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right, the next one is a little bit, um, is more of a heads up. That's why it's yeah. discussion right. only. So um, I have given to you an email that so first of all, Pam, town clerks in the area had a conversation um, and they were looking at Act 64. And Pam had come to me and asked me about what my understanding of the rule was. And I said, at first it didn't make any sense to me that the select board would, would approve or not whether or not the school Schools could mail Australian ballots. So right. she wrote to JP, the Secretary of State's office guy, and he was, and he was great as always, he's been wonderful to deal with. So what he's saying is to be clear, the issue, so let's just back up. So what the question is this, is Act 64 allows the school board to decide whether or not they're going to mail Australian ballot. Last year we did it, everybody did it right because of COVID. Mm -hmm. This year, now, the school, the school board the option to do that but they cannot do it without select board approval. So in, in this case, both the Bethel Select Board and the Royalton Select Board would have to vote in favor of Australian ballots being distributed. And um, as JP is saying here, is to be clear, the issue is not whether the select board has chosen to mail the ballots for town issue. The select board is basically allowing the mailing of ballots for school issues. So, um, so if the school board had a meeting and said, okay, we want to mail Australian ballot, then they have to make a formal request of both the Bethel and the Royalton select board um, to authorize. It's almost like you're giving them permission to use your to use the, you know, to deal with the voters in your town. But the state wrote the law, that's Act 64. It doesn't seem like it's. I know, it doesn't seem like it's within the select board's nothing, purview. We have nothing to do with the school. You, and you don't, this is only, basically you're giving permission for them to basically deal with your constituents, which yeah, is interesting which because is, when, we don't, Pam, uh, when Pam came to me, I said it doesn't make any sense. Is this one of these like cart for the horse type things? Or? It is, so, so <laughs> certainly that's the, that's the deal with Act 64. Hmm. I will say that um, some town clerks certainly feel that the answer should be no. Because if you want a ballot, you can call the town office 24-7 and leave a message. You can send an email 24-7 to the town clerk to request a ballot. You can go on to the Secretary of State's website 24-7 and request your ballot through the Secretary of State's office. You can come in and ask. 
one um, if you swing by and um, so there's ongoing options for people right. what people don't always know is what happens to the town clerk side so say I mail a ballot I'm a town clerk and I mail a ballot to Chris Jarvis if Chris Jarvis shows up at the poll and he does not have his ballot um, then he has to either go home and get his ballot or he has to complete an affidavit saying Sign that it. he lost it or that he didn't. So there's a whole process that happens on the town clerk side that, that the state isn't thinking about sometimes voters aren't thinking about. So town clerks are not opposed to, they want more people to vote, but they also want people to participate in the process by um, you know, coming to the and saying, I want my ballot, I'm a, I'm, I'm a participant in the system and, and I want my ballot and they can formally request one. And uh, so have, I don't have know. Have the schools weighed in on The schools have not. Desire, yeah, that's why this is a preliminary kind of a discussion only. Pam had given it to me and then I, after I did the agenda, started mm -hmm. that I reread it and I said, wait a second. The school hasn't formally requested this yet. Right. And she said no. So basically, we just said, we want you to be aware of that this is what the state has oh. done, that the legislators have passed the decision to the select boards. And then if you say yes, but Royalton says no, the answer is no. And you right. can't, both <laughs> towns have to agree. So, yeah. so why the legislature dragged the select boards into school business, I so the ballot don't tell you. What talking about is they ballot for officers in in our school district, they ballot Australian yes. ballot for yes. officers, yes. but the budget is voted off the floor. Right, correct. Okay. So, so in this case, it would just be assuming that officers. COVID doesn't change the guidelines again. Right. Right. Um, this, okay. you know, is, um, is Pam planning to talk to the school board and give them her opinion on on this matter, or is that? I don't know. Okay. It just she had gone to a meeting. Um, Pam had gone to a meeting with um, Carmen, yeah, I was in there. Carmen um, and a couple other town clerks because they had decided was that the town clerks in Windsor County would get together every quarter, which is a great idea because there's always a lot of changes that come down the pike from the state. So they had got together and talked about this and then Carmen was going to talk to the Royalton Select Board and Pam wanted you guys to know about it and then when we looked into it I said you know why we'll just it's a discussion only a heads up that this is coming so whether or not Carmen and Pam are going to go to the school board I don't know but I'll find out I, I suggest that they do they should go to the school board and say we either want this or we don't and this is well, why and to go to the school board you need to say we need it by this date or mm -hmm. else you know it's right. kind of like that, that the other it's kind of like the joint activities of the of the this um, the meeting you know book that doesn't get put together on time because the school doesn't have it to us in time so I think somehow you'd have to trace back date because then it would have to come to us to approve right so right. exactly so you'd have to kind of backdate what the final like they would have to give a yeah a vote at the school level by a certain date to get mm -hmm. it to the select you know I don't know I'm thinking out loud That's maybe it's true. the end of November so that then we have because it goes to print, what, January? Yeah, and this is only for annual meetings, so I don't, but then the other thing is, too, is, because um, the passage of S.15 states that the legislative may vote to mail, however, um, I wonder if this is the same as you, is if they're going to do this, do they have to put it on their warning? No, I guess not, somehow they're letting them, because if we want to go Australian ballot, we have to put it yeah. on the warning and vote on it. But it sounds like maybe they're giving the authority they, to the school doing, boards. They've been doing Australian ballot for a Oh, that's right. They have long. since they formed the... For okay, long. that's right. Except for last year. I forgot. You're right, Paul. That's right. So that's why they're not doing it. So yeah. So <clears throat> anyways, it, it's convoluted why the state yeah. passed the buck to the school select boards. I don't know. Maybe they're but, just... But, yeah, I would put that aside. It is what it is. Yeah, and so um, it's a it thought is. for a future meeting. I just wanted you to understand, Pam wanted yeah, you to know what's happening. I, I just want a clarification because as I read the plain reading of the text in that law, mm -hmm. says that the school board may, after receiving approval from the town, in other words, we would have to act first about mailing ballots 
Right. The and first then thing. if we were to act, they could then right. follow up with that. So, True, but they have to at least decide. They may not even want to, so it could be a moot point for us. So they have to, I guess they're gonna, they'll have their meeting and they're gonna decide whether or not they even want to ask the select boards to do that. So um, that was my conversation. They can only act after we give given approval, but they can make a decision they'd I, like I just, to. I just want to add to the end. Yeah. So, so let's wait until we hear from them. Yeah, we just wanted you to know it was coming down the pike in case you heard of heard of it. it. It was it's unusual. Again, I would just give them a deadline. Well, yeah, it's unusual. Yeah. So we'll talk. It'll be it. January. They'll be trying to rush something through. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll ask her if she's her and Carmen are going to the school yeah. board. Question mark. Um, Bethel, let's see. Only Bethel voters only vote for the Bethel representatives. Mm -hmm. Royalty voters only vote for the royalty representatives. In yeah. Bethel, you do not get to vote for the royalty representatives. Right. You know, a bunch of royalty people voted for Christmas. Yeah, I got 17 of them last year. Like those votes are more good. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. No, I thought it was. It's a I convoluted thing. We could vote for the royalty ones, couldn't we? I don't think so. You sure? Yeah, I thought we did. I mean, I left mine blank, but it gave you the option. I didn't know who the people yeah. were from Royalton, but they were on the ballot. And the same thing from the Royalton ballots. When you guys voted, were you able to vote for the Royalton rep ones? Yeah, I think you could. Yeah, I think so. Uh, they had the ability. I, I know when we were counting them, a lot of them were blank, just because people are like, well, I shouldn't be voting for this. But I think the, the way the statute got written, that you could. Because it's your district. Yeah. Your district represents Something it. Nice. Now, so probably previously, we would, yeah. No, it makes, it makes sense. Very <laughs> A lot of it doesn't seem to add up. <laughs> but well, let's just see what the yep. school board's thinking, and so that's why it was just discussion only, just so you guys could know. And then if they want to, maybe just have them get them into the next meeting and let's see what they do with a represent, you know, somebody from you know saying what they want to do, and we can put them on and yep. go that route. Hold them hostage for whatever we need, and you can't them. even get them to go out of town. Is there anything that we're looking for? <laughs> <laughs> not going to get any money from the state, then, please. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, anything further on that? Not that bad. one? Mm -hmm. All right, and then we had, as we had talked about the last meeting, we were just kind of getting our draft warning going, how that might look, and and we had talked about some other potential topics to put on the annual warning, which could, which could uh, be like, you know, the potential option to- 12 through 14. Yeah, vote on the Australian ballot uh, by town officers or with, you know, with the budget as well, or, or a hybrid mix of the two or none. Um, and then, as we had talked about the last meeting, I think it was just yeah. the last meeting in, in regards to the cannabis realtor piece, in order for somebody to open a cannabis store to sell, um, before they could do that, then the town would have to go to a townwide vote to allow that to happen. Um, and I won't bring it up again this meeting. I'm, I'm Impose that whole thing because if I vote, if I say I want to do it, you give me permission to open a store and it becomes a real shit show, you can't take it away from me. The way we wrote that law, once you give me the authority to sell it, I can sell it forever and ain't a damn thing you can do about it. Well, your grandfather didn't have that plan. That, that, I'm, I'm saying no to every, all that until they change that so that if you're a bad egg. We can get rid of you. And the question for us is the merits of the question. The question before us is whether to put it on the ballot. I understand that, but I can't, right. I can't support Well, I know we had up until this time, we, well, I mean, the big thing has been is there anybody in town looking to do that? Because we haven't heard anything. I haven't heard anything about uh, retail. I was approached in an email um, today about someone who's considering doing a cannabis cultivation. And um, so, but that would not be a state right, permit. Right, would be this. That, that would be a state permit that would not be affected by this. So right. um, just to backtrack a little bit, I added 12 and 13, which is 12 is shall the voters elect by town 
elect its town officers by a straw-man ballot. Number 13 is shall the voters adopt all budget articles. The kind of the consensus was not the budget, but I put it on here for you guys to decide that, so that's why it's on here. The consensus at the time was no, it would be just the officers, but I just wanted you to know this is what it looks like if we put it on there. 14 is shall the voters authorize cannabis retailers and retail portions of integrated licensee establishments in town pursuant to the statute. It was until recently that the original act that was passed said we had to vote on it by this coming town meeting or we would automatically opt in. The state um, changed that so now we, it does not have to be voted on at town meeting. The select board could not put it on the, on, um, the warning and could wait until someone petitioned it to come before them to ask them to add it. Um, so it's just kind of an ongoing conversation that the select board has had just to kind of keep you all up to speed on what's going on. So, and, and they're correct, as of yet, we haven't had anyone come who wanted to open a, a cannabis retail shop, but um, I, as I said, I did have someone approach me today via email about cultivating, um, but that again, wouldn't be affected by this. Mm -hmm. But whether or not we put it on there to address Dave's point, we can't change what the statute is right no so even by not putting it on the warning doesn't change the fact that that's still there and if somebody comes forward and wants to petition to put it on the warning mm -hmm. it's still going to have to be dealt with you know one way or the other and i understand what i understand what you're saying mm -hmm. um, but it would be a legislative thing to have to change that as part of the statute I, i'm willing to cross that bridge when someone comes but i'm not willing to say Let's go. I'm not willing to put it on there without someone requesting an actual, because it, that, that's the only thing I can do. Well, I know, I know, you know, some of this, well, originally in the House bill, it said that you were going to have to do it within so many days of, of it coming out. And I know the Senate bill changed that. But I think in some cases, like some municipalities would want to get this out in front if you have a localized tax and things like that, because then you can set up those parameters to it, where in Bethel you don't have any of that. You know, we don't have a localized tax system or anything like that, and we, and we don't have, at least, you know, to our knowledge right now, we don't have anybody that wants to put anything in. And there is a formal system in place that, let's say in, you know, April of next year, somebody's thinking about doing it and they really want to do it, they could petition the board to do a vote, you know. Um, so it's not like we're not allowing somebody, you know, the opportunity to do it. Um, yeah, so my and you vote and it gets voted in favor of saying voting officers by Australian ballot, it won't take effect obviously this year, but we'll take it right. to the, the, the next town meeting so yeah. anyways that was charged so if you're okay with it then um was it the first meeting in november that you wanted to put that on have a bigger discussion uh, two things one I would add either or under the budget uh, budget and other business so that if there were a non-binding resolution that were to come that that would be it's number 15 it's already on there. To transact any other non-binding business that may legally come before this meeting pursuant to 17. But it doesn't say Australian ballot versus in person. I don't follow. We're in items 12, we're, we're suggesting yeah. voting on whether or not we elect town officers in the future by Australian ballot. In, 12, in item 13, we're suggesting that about budget articles. Yep. We are not making any recommendation about non-binding or other kinds of business that may come that require a vote. Oh, but it's because it's a non-binding resolution. I mean, you do vote. You vote from the floor and they we count. We vote so that if, if, suppose we were, the town were to say, we're going to do officers and budget yeah. by Australian ballot, right. then if there were the desire to have a non-binding resolution, would we have to have a town meeting? Well, you already have a sort of town meeting anyways, even if you I, vote, you'll have an informational. I'm not sure you can. I'll have to look at that because I don't know because the term non-binding, I don't 
don't know if you vote non-bindings. I've never seen anyone vote a non-binding on Australian ballots. So it's a great question. Let me look. Well, I, I just want to make know. sure that that is other business that might yeah. come before a town meeting. And I just want to make sure that we're covering the bases. Now, yeah, I don't it, know. it may be that we don't want to say anything about that, and we don't want to say anything about the budget, at least. But <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Only, because, only do officers, but that's. Uh, yeah. No, I see what you're saying because it's an interesting premise. I mean, some towns vote their zoning by Australian ballot, but for you guys, you would have to know the question way in advance to print on the ballot, and then every time they could, yeah. yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. Legal well, question. Or, or I'll find out. I was know. the was the uh, plan for the rec center uh, recreate? Was that voted by the town? Mm -hmm. But was it a vote vote or was it a non-binding? Was it just a discussion that you voted on? You pick plan A or B. Did you actually vote on it at the town meeting? No, or it was voted on was appropriating additional money. Right, the okay. money's for it. Specifically towards the skate park. So that was one of, in our discussion of um, voting the budget off the floor versus Australian ballot was if you go to Australian ballot for the budget vote, you lose that ability to make amendments from the floor, which is what we currently can do. Right. And so the example with the rec center was we made an, um, an amendment and an appropriation of additional funds specifically to the skate park and added that to the budget. So then when we voted the budget, that was added in. So it wasn't a vote on option. It, it wasn't like which plan are we okay. choosing. So we didn't, so the, the plan itself wasn't adopted by the town. That was the select board decision, I believe. Right. Well, the, the plan was Shopping. the plan. Well, there was there was a couple of different options, and the townspeople through through town meeting and other, you know, had talked about doing. I don't remember if it was B or C, but that was the one that they went with. It was it wasn't nothing binding, but there was input into the decision. Resolution or discussion, yeah. Yes. And then the select board acted upon the, well, point me. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I would so like to know what, if anything, anybody here has any ideas or suggestions about voting Australian versus in-person town meeting, if you've got any ideas since you're here. I mean, I'm... I mean, I know still, uh, and I continue to, I've been trying to reach out to different contact individuals in town when I see them. And Thank you. It seems to, be, seems to be still the quorum is, is at least having the budget in person because of the meaning of town meeting of, you know, doing pies and visiting with, you know, with your peers and uh, the interaction um, piece of it. Um, but I, 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 you know, and again, I, not to say that I, I've been trying to get information from long-term residents of Bethel uh, more because, you know, like we talked about here, you know, um, I don't know, half an hour ago about, you know, people that come in from wherever that buy a piece of property and then, you know, want to tell <laughs> Ted Bethel what we're doing, you know. So I've been trying to find long-term standing residents to say, what do you think? And, and a lot of them still, from what I've talked to, still want to stick with an in-person whole thing um, once a year um, I'm is what it these people if they have any ideas. Yeah. This is something I've been thinking about a lot because we're in a moment where what is the democratic process? And I think the value of town meetings and discussions is that sometimes come in people come in to something. If they just get the ballot and they're at home, they say, oh yeah, I did that. But if they hear discussion, and maybe it doesn't even come to amendments, but people talking about it, that helps make them more informed, makes them more part of the process. And that's, this is, you know, we have an opportunity here, which it's not like they can't, they can't have a town meeting in Manhattan, you know, unless they get a, you know, and it kind of goes to the uniqueness of our town. I think there are two things there. One is we want the most number of people to vote. Right. And I think that, you know, if there are people who are homebound, you know, that we want to make accommodations so that 
they can, when my mom was up at Manic and was 99, she wanted to vote. And sort of like, but she couldn't physically go to a town, come here to the meeting or something. Right. That's, that's something that, you know, we need to be mindful of that. But at the same time, I think there's really valuable value to people speaking in public and people, you know, as a group, you know, moving more towards consensus rather than, you know, the incredible polarization that we have. There's if the issue is uh, attendance, mm -hmm. um, I mean, first of all, there's always the option of being on a Saturday. I'm sure that's been discussed. Um, and also, I, would, I just wonder if, um, you know, with all the experience with COVID and Zoom, I wonder if we've advanced far enough to the fact where you might be able to have a hybrid town meeting as well, which mm -hmm. would increase attendance. Yeah. Yeah. We did do the town meeting via Zoom last year, and, um, and ha or had the budget informational via Zoom because of COVID, we were forced to go, um, you know, all Australian ballot. And I think the select board at the time and the people present in the audience, we talked about this a few weeks ago, the majority, the consensus at that time seemed to be vote your officer's Australian ballot, but leave the budget in person. And then you can kind of have that hybrid of, of back and forth of both. But we did have a budget informational, and I think there was, well, there was the six of us and three others, I think, that came, or four others that came with that. We had more of the prior meeting, uh, maybe 15 um, total of the prior meeting. But um, so that's why we're, you know, we're trying to work out this, the hybrid now, but certainly, um, Trying to find the way, you know, what's the consent, you know, what would, to find the happy medium, I guess. And, it, and there has been some studies, like you were pointing out, about um, like a s potential Saturday. And there has been studies that have been presented in regards to doing business, you know, town-wide business on certain days of the week. And they, you know, the thought was like a, a weekend, it would be easier for people, right? But they found that that wasn't the case, you know, just as many within reason, you know, just as many people showed up on Saturday as they did Tuesday. Um, so I think that's why they kind of kept it where it was. Um, but the, you know, the challenge I, I guess still is like, you know, I've been able to addre uh, address the budget in a couple of different ways over the last few years in person, um, which even though we do it in person, we still have an informational night as a board to get feedback and, and things like that. And then last year, you know, was a kind of the first time that we did, you know, the Australian ballot. So we, you know, addressed the budget, you know, just like this again. And I really didn't see any extra participation between one or the other. There was still the same, you know, four or five people that <laughs> come to weigh in or, or maybe in some cases, just, you know, the same ones that come to all the meetings, you know. Um, but it didn't really seem like, you know, you would think like if you were going to, I guess the perception would be is if you were going to vote it, Australian ballot, you would think that you would have more people that would come to the informational meeting so that they could have their voices weighed in on, uh, you know, because I remember a couple years ago we had the uh, human services piece. Remember, th there was one that was left off that we added on, and you would think you'd have more interaction like that, but it wasn't really the case. And, you know, there's definitely pluses and minuses to both ways. And getting getting more voters typically when you do do it from a ballot, you typically have more voters because they can come in between seven and seven and mm -hmm. get one, but, but then you lose some of your flexibilities of changing things from the floor, or I'll just point out like the school, for instance, had a, an, uh, a vacancy on their director this past time, so there was nobody on the ticket, so then you get a, you know, find in your write-in minimums, you know, where from the floor you could vote somebody from the floor, I guess, but... Uh, yeah, You know, like have a chance to meet somebody you've never heard from before, get to talk about themselves and uh, get to know them a little bit before you make a vote. You know, that doesn't happen. Well, uh, last, last time we had a study of vote for officers, uh, and there were several opportunities for people to come on via Zoom uh, to meet with meet the candidates, hear what they had to say, right. get to know them, and, and a number of people took advantage of that. Yeah. And uh, I would argue the people who attend, who would have, if we had had an in-person town meeting, 
and voted for <coughs> officers by Australian ballot, people present at the town meeting would have been able to vote for the officers, including a write-in, if with at the town meeting, they would have been able to vote. So would people outside of the town meeting who, could, who couldn't or wouldn't or whatever uh, get off work or be able to, to participate directly. So there's a, there, there is a question for some about whether not just hybrid, but a mixed, <laughs> mixed hybrid so that it's both and uh, in terms of uh, doing part of the meeting Australian and part of the meeting in person. Years ago, the school meeting was during the day, and it was moved so that parents could come in the evening. The numbers have not changed. I've seen other different days of the week. We, yep. we try so, everything that everybody's talked about. Yep. And you still get 120 people maximum. I've seen towns move Boom. from That's from it. Monday to Saturday and they had maybe that maybe a couple of the people changed, but the numbers were still the yeah, same. So the, same. the people that want to come seem to always come. But uh, it was Bridget, interesting. Tom Bridge and Chelsea, somebody local tried to do go Saturday. Branch mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the number stayed the same, the faces changed. The yeah. demographic change, but the numbers stayed the same. Yeah, it's interesting. Well, that's and important. The point of what Gene is saying, if you have anything on the Australian ballot, maybe you could vote at a regular meeting, but you can't nominate anybody else. The only people that can be voted for are the people who are on that Australian ballot. Mm -hmm. You're not going to change that. Because they would have to fill in, they have to get a petition. They right, have to so, so there, there's a down point where you're trying to take and use in person meeting to change how you vote for your people. You can't. You're going to, you've got, you've got a list of a slate, mm -hmm. and you're not going to talk about it or anything. You're just going to say, vote. This is it. You've got to vote for Lindley or Dave. That's it. Well, in the end, you'll send it to the voters, and the voters will decide. Either they want Australian ballot in, on their officers, or, or they don't. And I think what we're trying to do right now at the board level is, I mean, the board can just as easily say, OK, we're going to put one, both, or none of them on. you know. But I think what we're trying to do is try to figure out, you know, based upon the community members, is you know, we want to do the right thing, but make sure we have the right information, too. So, like, do we do it with a binding, like, put it on the warning to do a binding measure where people can vote binding? Or, or maybe, you know, maybe we do a non-binding resolution where you can at least get a weigh-in from people and say, oh, wow, it's like 50-50, really close. Or 90-10, you know, most people want to go this way. Um, you know, so, there, you know, we have all all kinds of directions that we can go. And I, I think probably a lot of us didn't, hadn't really thought of Australian ballot as much of an option over the years until the COVID hit last year. And then, you know, we were kind of forced into that, um, that way of, of doing things. So, um, but I, you know, like I'd said before, when I started my early career in voting and it, you know, in the town I lived in, it was all done Australian ballot. There was like, you know, of course, I was you know only in my early 20s, so I didn't really follow the politics very well. But you know, you got the ballot, and in some ways, it was kind of you know you look at the and you're like, I don't even know half these people, you know, or you know, I I, I don't know what you know, this money you know is appropriated for. And then when I came to Bethel, it was like completely different. It was like you know you're sitting in a gymnasium with you know 200 people and. You know, it was kind of neat to see the process, and this was before the pies, but you know, it was, it was neat to see the process, like, you know, it, 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 at that time it was always the same person would get up and make motions, you know, it was, it was kind of fun to watch, and, you know, but there was a lot of times, I think, just about every meeting where something had been mended or changed, or there was an opportunity to fix a wrong, or, you know, something like that, so. Um, yeah, and I think, kind of going back to John's point of, like, I think where I'm torn about this is, this is one of the truest versions of democracy that we'll ever encounter in our lives. And it's not that you negate democracy, but you really fundamentally change it. And so while I really do support sort of the equity side of this and making it more accessible, 
I struggle with the fact that I actually think we'll get votes for people like, oh, I know that last name versus right. I know that person and what they stand for, or I, I heard them speak at informational night, town meeting day, kind of doesn't matter. I, I actually informed myself versus right. I'm just checking a box because this thing was mailed to me. I remember times sitting in the, uh, and I'm sure everybody here has done the same, where you thought you were going in person to vote a certain way. And then through conversation, all of a sudden you decide, well, you know what? I think I will vote the budget in, you know? Through some pieces of conversation that you, you know, um, you know, I've done that at school before. I'm like, ah, oh, all right. <laughs> you, know, but, you know, so it's like, you know. I think, don't misunderstand. <laughs> I come from communities, plural, that have never even heard of town meetings. Mm -hmm. And I've lived before in towns that had town meetings. This is a wonderful place and way to do business. There's no question about that in my mind. Um, but I am aware that it doesn't, it simply doesn't reflect the will of the majority mm -hmm. of the people. Well, I mean, and, 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 uh, yeah. Or, well, I, I just, I just think that's well. The data there is a limit. Yeah, the data clearly shows that you know. I mean, usually we get what two hundred people at town meeting day, maybe, and you know, if you go to a ballot system, you'll get probably three times that, right? I mean, we've seen that. Um, you could ask Randolph how the numbers increased. Yeah, oh, I remember uh, the first year after the school merger when it was in Royalton, remember that the school meeting was in Royalton that year? There was only 17 of us from Bethel that were there. 17, you know? And I think there was a total of 180 some people and it was like 17 Bethel and 160 people. There is no system devised by human beings yeah. that can't be gained and can't be, and, and doesn't have weaknesses. All right, so we're going to try to let Lily speak. So, so anyway, let's see if we can't get if we can't figure out how to hear Lily. <laughs> yeah, can you all hear me? Yes. Yep. Great. Um, I just I just want to say, as someone who did not grow up in Vermont, and I've lived in Bethel for about ten years now, I probably took me about four years of living here before I felt comfortable doing it around me because I didn't know what it was and was scary and different than what I was used to. So I think that, like, I think how we do this is incredible. And that's what really I think that, like, such an advantage in that true form of democracy. I also think that there's so much to be said about welcoming people, and even people who live here for a long time who have never been to town meeting, just, like, that idea that is just as important as child care and work and schedules is also just people feeling welcome, and, like, they understand what it is, and that they're allowed to be there, and it's for them. So, I just like to say that, and then also, like, is it best that it's during the day, or is there a possibility that it's in the evening? Like, could there be some questioning of people? Try what time are they making to get people there? Town meeting can be, could be, the hours could be changed. I mean, I think you have the, I think you have the entire day by, by statute. And if you were going to do some of it Australian ballot, um, um, I came to town where they voted the officers by Australian ballot then so the night before so Monday night um, we had our town meeting at I think it started at 7 p.m. so we did a piece did a few articles then the break from town meeting and then the school did their meeting and then town meeting finished and then the next day you voted Australian ballot all day on either uh, school budget police budget um, the town officers and questions like that. It makes for a you know grueling couple of days for the clerk, but it but um, so there are options, Wiley. Um, and then you have the you have the school function too. Sorry, there's nothing that that first meeting piece of that where like things have been amended and things have changed, and then whatever was amended or changed that next day that was voted on. No, if you. Yeah, no, you couldn't do that. You would, the only, you'd have to do them separately. If you, if you vote your officers, then you could always allow someone running to say a few words if they wanted, but you couldn't really 
you couldn't do anything with the budget except for discuss why it, you were going to vote on it the next day, but you couldn't make any amendments because the ballot has to be printed and legally available X amount of days prior to an election. So, and you would have already published town, yeah, town report as well. So, uh, you know, they're just like anything in life. There's drawbacks and there's bonuses. So, with officers and elections, there's always the opportunity of a write-in. Oh, of course. Yeah. So, if you were to have the town meeting the day before, the town meeting could nominate a new person and say, "There's a write-in for you." Well, the other thing is this 12 and 13, if they went on this year's um, warning, would not go exactly. into effect until next right. year. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah, which is so what, yeah, this, which is year's, yep. this year's process would be the same as it had been in the past, yep. where everything is coming off the floor. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. And then if this goes through, then next meeting, then it would then change, it would change it to changing. this form. Yep. Yep. So I'll make sure, I guess, sounds like we're going to advertise that for a bigger discussion on no, the first meeting in November. Yep. But as long as you're, do you want me to leave this warning the same? Do you want me to remove item? I, mean, I don't know, at this point, it matters if we yeah, move it around or not. Leaving it the same for now, if we're going to continue the discussion. Yeah. Give more people a chance to weigh in and maybe okay. these minutes. Like this is, you know, then this is what it could look like. Then we'll leave it alone and we'll yeah. advertise for a bigger discussion for your request at the beginning of November. Can so. we um, All right. Can we make a point to specifically put that out? Like yes. On, on yeah, that's what I was going to do. And sort of call out that yeah. this is what's mm -hmm. being discussed. Cool. Yep. Thanks. Absolutely. That's what we talked about. Put a bigger push. All right, looks like you're on to the next. Yeah, I was just looking. Are all those dates on there? The I don't know. Close enough. <laughs> Sundays. <laughs> I'm not sure. I didn't. I didn't go through and look at every single one. I'll figure them out later. But it's just like the numbers aren't good. But I knew all the people that were running. That Dave Betty's up. Lindley's up. Um, I knew the lister position was up, and then. Um, so, right. Well, those are minor details. Perfect. Okay. All right. Any further discussion on that? Are we good for tonight? Good. All right. And then we had uh, last time we had talked about the um, the climate action piece, um, which there was. And, and Jean, correct, correct me if I was wrong, but we have um, going back three weeks now. It was kind of made available to us to have the opportunity, there was, there was some legislation that's already been passed at the state level um, and to formalize a group that's gonna be overseeing the uh, climate um, agenda for the state. And now this is the opportunity at the lower level for us to have an opportunity to have a say in potentially what that board would be, you know, would be addressing inside that conversation. Um, so kind of a last minute thing, you know, I think we found out about it like less than a week before our last, yeah, because our last board meeting, we only found out like three days or so before. So it's kind of a fast evolving, if the town wants to do something, we got to do it, but we got to do it kind of quick. Um, and then, you know, it can come in many different, we can come in many different ways. It could be, you know, everybody could send their own letter, you know, a group could put together some, some um, talking points to, to send. Um, you know, it could come with some greater weight by including the select board or other identities to it or your local senator or representatives. Um, so it was agreed upon at the last board meeting that, um, that Gene was gonna head up a, a discussion group to, um, uh, to meet, which they did. Um, and then at that time come up with some potential points of interest that that the individuals uh, that took the time out to uh, be a part of the the group um, had um, that they thought would best represent the town town say in um, information to be sent to this to the group. So, um, so, so they've met and we have the information in front of us. Um, in regards to that, I don't think it matters who the people were, but I was kind of curious who all the individuals were that met with Eugene. 
Um, Did you get four, 24? How many? I don't know how many people you had. There were six or seven. It was about the same as the, it struck me, the similarity with uh, the emergency meeting we had about the VOREC mm -hmm. application. Yeah. Yep, yep. Oh. So. Makes sense. So I think at this point it was kind of, we were, we had kind of tasked Gene, or Gene wanted to head it up anyways, um, to just go get some input. Um, it's, in two weeks it's kind of difficult to get everybody's input, but at least have it, an option for community members to um, go, um, which some did take part, and then, and then based upon that, you know, a little back up before what whatever's on paper, you know, the board was kind of just at that last time we were just kind of thinking, you know, is it something that should come from the board or shouldn't come from the board, or is there enough time to get proper weigh-in so that the board understands that it's enough well-roundedness of our our colleagues of the town, you know, I remember we were talking about those those uh, pieces and then you know w would the board would the board endorse something would they not endorse something would we put it on a non-binding at town meeting day because remember a couple years ago we did something like that <laughs> so <laughs> mr vago um but you know so there was those discussions on like what do we do with that um oh uh, yeah probably somewhere 16 17. Yeah. 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 But there were a number of towns that wanted to get a non-binding right. resolution or, or actually they wanted to put some push to the state to say, let's make a stand, let's say this is a serious thing, this is critical to our town, our state, our country, the world. And let's let's get on board with it. And that was about final? It was about final. It's basically, it's what then, what, what happened was the state then said, yeah, or we have this aspirational goal of being 90% carbon free in 2050. Now, from what science is telling us today, it's not 2050. It's not even 2030. It's like, what do we do in the next two, three years? Because, yeah, 2030 is a real hard number, unfortunately. You know, and there are, you know, in Norway now, last year, 61% of all the new car vehicles sold were electric. This year, it's 77.5% in the same period of time. And, I, you know, and it's sort of like, well, we can't afford it, we can't do this, we can't do that. But, you know, what about two, three generations down the line? Are they going to say, gee, they really couldn't afford it? Isn't it a shame they could spend two trillion dollars on the military in Afghanistan and they couldn't spend a hundred, you know, a few hundred million getting us on the right track? And it strikes me, I, I go nuts when I see them build a parking ride over there, you know, and that's actually, that's in world, isn't it? Yeah. But I mean, here's this place, I kept looking at it and thinking of this park one day in the future and stuff, and then I see them coming in and they're paving it and putting up lights, and I'm thinking like, well, where are the solar panels? Well, they have the charging stations. Why is providing energy to the grid, and, you know, and, and also recharging cars, and doing everything moving forward. So there are things that I think as a town we do that are really important and we're running out of time. And so I think that what my understanding of what is going on is basically just getting into a position of people saying, hey, back in 2017 or it was, we said we want to make that, we want to make this aspirational goal and move towards it. And right now, we're saying, well, number one, we are not from in those five years or whatever, it was from that, we have not taken sufficient steps. We're waiting on it and getting further. So, and at the same time, we keep building infrastructure 
that is, 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 is committing us to uh, carbon-based fuel consumption for the next 50 years. So there's no way in the world that we can, and at the same time, we're seeing, okay, hurricane, the sand came through. Every day I think about sustainability, and I think about resilience, and I think about affordability, and I think about how, you know, okay, everybody has vehicles, and they're all pretty much, I didn't see too many Priuses in the park. <laughs> well, you know, but we do, you know, we make choices in terms of the kinds of vehicles we have and we use and how we <coughs> and we have, but anyway, you know, and obviously there are, as a community, when a dollar gets spent on fuel oil, we don't see, we see three cents or something. Whereas, you know, if we can move towards a point where we are, I also have all these wild ideas about, you know, a rooftop you know, as a way to help save the lives of farms. That we, you know, the state said, okay, here are some funds to keep the structure sound so that we have this iconic, when people come to Vermont, they want to see the barns. And if they see them with solar panels on the top, there's a message there that's valuable. So I'm really, you know, I, 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 I think that the, the experience I had when I, and basically I had to come to town meeting and just basically say, you know, this is non-binding, you know, you know, but we as a community can be, you know, sort of nudging this process in a way. And I think that we're in the same thing now. So the thing that concerns me when I read those various things and then three more bullet points added to it. There's a certain point where most people eyes glaze over and say, you know, you get, you get party favors for everyone and stuff. And, and I think that that's, I think it should be really brought down to very simple stuff about, and I think the whole weatherization thing is, when my mother was towards the end of, before she went to Mennon and, and that process, we were spending probably $6,000 a year on fuel oil. And we didn't, we are living in a 200 year old house. And I think that this, this whole discussion is crazy in terms of all the things we need to do to lower our carbon footprint. Number one, it's simple. It's just weather strip windows and doors. And, you know, there, there are like layers that we can do that. And so I think that it's very important that, that this town supports in a non-binding fashion this movement to make the state accountable for the fact that we said we're moving towards here at 2050, and many of us think that that's not enough. It's not good enough. But we can say, all right, Let's start putting the processes in place so we, number one, can really evaluate where we are and how we move forward. And I, you know, I can't tell, I just, from the, from the, when, when we did the renovation upstairs in, in the old brick house, um, the, the foam, you know, we brought it back down to, Mark Cook came in there and he said one day and he said, you know, you and I are the first people in 200 years to really see the structure of this house. Does it have walls and ceilings and everything? And, and you got to see that that house, when it was built more than 200 years ago now, most of the structural pieces in it were recycled. You know, and then they did, the reason they put in walls and horsehair plaster and stuff was to create air barriers to be something, they didn't have fiberglass insulation or spray foam or anything. And so now, too, we're at a point where, where we can really make major changes if, if, we, if we have the will to do it. And, and I think that, you know, we can incorporate all of the things in terms of, yeah, this should, these benefits should not be kept from people who don't have the financial resources to do it. 
And, and that's a benefit. It's a benefit to our town and the state and the planet. So, okay, I'm going to get down. I mean, I know when I, you know, talking at the board, we'll, we'll get to you in one second, but I know when, you know, kind of looking through it, um, I mean, I think we all, I think everybody understands that there's changes going on in our planet and we need to find ways to, um, you know, do things better, you know, on many different levels. And But it, I always come back to the whole, like, two things. Well, one, John just hit the thing, the affordability piece, and I think about our community members that, I mean, if we raise the rate, let's say, $4 a quarter on water, they're down here, you know, wanting to know why we're doing that, where this impact could be thousands and thousands of dollars over the next, you know, 10 years that they'll have to invest to, you know. And it always seems like my, my experience with, you know, since I've been an early adult is, you know, the state's so often just taking these dates and throwing them on the wall and saying, by 2020, we will be, you know, and then you get to 2020, it's like, well, okay, we're no closer than we were 20 years ago. So some of it's like holding them accountable, right? Like, we want something done. But at the same time as we want something done, but it, it's gotta be affordable and worth our while when I say, because there's often times where Vermont or small communities in Vermont are on the forefront, right? Charging, right? We're gonna change things and then nobody else follows us, right? And we're stuck there. Like, we just invested a whole lot of money and meanwhile you flip open the paper and China is building three more coal plants, right? And it's like, come on, like, what? Or, or, you know, the big thing, like, 20 years ago was just charging a waste into Lake Champlain, right? Everybody is, how do we, you know, reduce sulfur into the lake? And then all of a sudden you read, okay, uh, you know, Burlington just charged, you know, 25,000 gallons of waste into the, you know, it's like, you know, I kind of get in that thing, like, if we are all going to sacrifice, like, we need to have those partners, right? Like, they get a sacrifice, too, because, you know, for what little bit of money we have to invest into this thing for nobody else to do it is kind of tough. Uh, but the other thing I was kind of looking into it was, is how does this line to, it's important that things line into, like, the town plan and, and you know, maybe the energy committee kind of spear, you know, moves this, you know, as it goes. And, you know, so I guess... You know, like John was saying, is I, I think I like a lot of what was in here. Maybe we could dial it down some, uh, but it also fits the town plan more. If you, you know, because we have things in here that aren't in the town plan, so it's kind of like we just did town plan. But you know, if we if we back it, then it kind of doesn't. Well, I think there's another gentleman who wants yeah. to speak. There's another so. gentleman who wants to speak. Yes. Well, let me just grab. Go ahead. Yeah, lofty goals, lofty goals. But on a very practical level, what John was talking about is coming Saturday at Center of Supplies, there's a workshop on weatherization. Efficiency Vermont, which is a great organization that's been around a long time, doing these kinds of things we're all advocating. They're actually doing it. And this, this thing is happening this Saturday. Now, how many people are going to show up? I, how, I mean, I saw it in the, in the Herald newspaper. I don't know how many people would come and actually um, learn this thing, but there's, there's going to be experts there telling people how to do this, that, and the other thing. Small step, a small step, but it, it's going to happen Saturday. That's, that's all I wanted to do. Hey, through Bethel Mills, our efficiency Vermont, and great, I know Nicole Sear, the um, chair of the Energy Committee, had been sending these tips to Kelly. So every phase on Wednesday, we were putting out these uh, weatherization Wednesdays tips to go out on Facebook, which was nice, too, with something like that, partnering with Efficiency Vermont. And so it's good. I'll, I'll let Kelly know, have her find out the information and do a push about it um, on Facebook and Front Porch Quorum. Um, so thank you. Let's do that. Mary? So we have three members of the meeting, which was a big majority, <laughs> yeah. compared to everyone else. Mm -hmm. um, the Conservation Commission is interested in taking a stand. Um, but we were at the meeting last week, and we haven't had time to discuss it because our meeting is tomorrow night. <laughs> and so, um, also, I, um, the Vermont Natural Resources Council definitely has a plan, and uh, which makes sense, is balanced, covers all the territory. And so those are things we need to have time to discuss before 
anyone takes a position, I think. Yeah, and that was one of the things we talked about was kicking it to committees, energy or conservation. And mm -hmm. as no, just doing the town plan, I came in at the tail end of it, but the energy committee, the conservation commission did great things. So the town plan really kind of I think came a long way in the last, you know, iteration of it. Mm -hmm. So um but it's nice to have a committee come forward that's saying that they're willing to, to take something on and 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 um Well we at least want time to discuss it. Yeah. And I think one of, the, one of the hard parts here, because I, I very much would want you guys to have that time and the way in, but it's also operating under a deadline of this Friday. To And so if you're going to get the weight of whether it's a town committee or a select board, but putting that weight behind this, which is I think the whole point of this discussion isn't actually what exact change we're going to affect, because the reality is we're not the climate council. We're just telling the Climate Council, here are things we would like you to realistically look at and yes. think about in your... But the Vermont Natural Resources Council has been working on it as <laughs> long as the council has been in existence. Right. And they, so I, they have a seat at the, at the table. Yes, the they do. Yeah, they have yes. a member of the council. And they have a very concise, sensible, balanced way. So, and we're going to review that tomorrow. And I think, you know, we had touched base on it last time as well as, you know, a little bit this evening is, you know, one of the big, you know, probably the biggest issue that we had with it was not because we don't agree with it, it's just like acting in such a short period of time, like, you know, not being able to thoroughly vet mm -hmm. the information, you know, because um, the longer usually you have to vet the information, the more buy-in you get from your community and the shorter period you're just taking a, Microscopic look at you know what what individuals want. Yeah. Well, I mean that's kind of. We've had the opportunity. I mean, probably ideally, you know, in perfect world, it would be like you know you have this kind of a town meeting day, and you know, what does you know the town want? Does the town want to adopt you know this report, kind of on a non-binding, and then at least you have the town support on it on a document um, where right now now it's kind of tasked to the five of us do we want to speak for the whole town on 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 this document or something different <coughs> but oh by the way we have a deadline to hit like this you know and the other point so, is the draft from this committee doesn't come out until december it's not available oh wow from yes. the vermont climate council yeah, excuse me but that's precisely why we need to come in now because the draft is still a draft, which means that the Climate Council is considering public comment. They have invited public comment by October 15th so that they can consider the comments from individuals, committees, boards uh, in the preparation of that plan. Uh, once that plan is developed, it will have to go to the legislature, at which point we will again have an opportunity to say to the legislature, we want you to consider X, Y, Z, uh, because we, or we support what's in the plan, we don't support what's in the plan. So the reason for acting now is because they have requested public comment. Um, so there will be absolutely no public comment after the 15th, is that what you're saying? That's correct. I have a little trouble. Well, they must be that's, public meetings. That's their policy. That's their, that's what they have put together. They're receiving public comment until October 15th, which gives them 45 days to take all of the public comment from public interest groups, from select boards, from town committees all over the state, from and individuals. There will be no public comments after the 15th. They are not necessary. They, you could make comments. Yes. However, they are saying we will consider. We have this period of open when we are requesting public comment, and October 15th, our request closes. Now, you can make all the comments you want, whether it will have any impact, 
or be fed into their process of writing is yet another question. This is, is their question. policy. This is their process. It's just like a legislative process. There is a period for public comment, and then that closes, and you, the, the legislature, whatever, makes its decisions based on that sometime later. It, that's their policy process, not ours. But couldn't and the Conservation Commission still discuss it and the send conservation their comments in on right. for private? And 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 this particular Yeah, so the Conservation Commission then Conservation can Commission can their... all can can act, not act. I mean that's There's a vehicle right here through the Natural Resources Council to do that. Yes. Right. We as a commission. So as a, as a conservation commission, you are, you are free to act as a confirmation, conservation commission. We're here tonight talking about whether the select board wants to make its statement. Uh, and, and that's a different, that, I mean, those are two different organizations. And their statements may or may not be the same. And this is, by the way, a proposal, so it could be modified in any way that, that we decide to do it. But it, and in terms of speaking to the, to the, the Climate Council, there's the, the 12 points. There are three other actions that grew out of that committee that we might want to put on a future agenda or even the town agenda, town meeting agenda, in terms of, uh, but, but w if we're going to speak, we need to speak, this body, if this body is going to speak, needs to speak tonight. And, and I would point out, by the way, that the very first bullet has to do with the cost and how that cost is shared and, and born who bears the cost considers the ability to pay and the availability of financial resources when developing taxing and other ways to pay for the transitions to a net, to net zero emissions by 2050. We want the plan to consider how it's paid for and who pays for it. So let's just wait a second. So the fact is that so you have this laid out letter that was presented to you that um, came to you. So I included <coughs> in this the People's Climate Action Plan petition that, of course, is, is 350 Vermont, which is, which is not to be confused with the Vermont Climate Council. This is a private nonprofit that has, you know, federal. So to me, since um, so if, obviously if the Conservation Commission wants to make their comments, and certainly they can. So I'm not sure if you just want to since you all have read this document, if you're all in favor of doing it as is, or if there are changes that you want to make to this existing document, or if the majority of you even want to do this. So I guess there's a few questions here, but there's a gentleman with his hand up. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm here as, you know, not as a conservation commission person. I'm here as a resident of Bethel. And I guess I decided to come mostly because I'm interested in giving a sense of just a general sense, informally, of how this board views the climate emergency. Do you uh, sense the urgency um, that we are, in fact, in an emergency? And um, do you sense that we will need to be putting it front and center, uh, probably in just about any kind of town business that we do going forward? Because it basically will be affecting practically all uh, that we do in this town, whether it's uh, infrastructure on a nuts and bolts letter, you know, level of replacing culverts or installing uh, you know, chargers downtown for electric vehicles or uh, designing a new town garage, what goes into that. Uh, it's gonna be nuts and bolts issues that we as a town will have to deal with now and into the future. So 
I'm just trying to get a sense of what your sense of urgency is and whether you embrace the fact that, in fact, this is an, emer it is an emergency. We already know that um, uh, we've had enough experiences with um, weather in this town to know that uh, we will see more of them. And uh, it's going to affect us now and it's going to affect our children and grandchildren. So that's what I'm here for. Uh, regardless of any specific document or plan or anything, what is your sense of uh, your, your role? I can speak to some of the nuts and bolts of it, and you're right, and I actually spend a lot of time on the nuts and bolts of it, dealing with stormwater runoff and, and making sure that we get grant money to write those, to deal with culverts, to do with upgrades so that we can get the money from the state. We just did a project on Sanders. We're going to do another project on Christian Hill. We did two projects on Hooper Hollow, and to exactly to, to deal with that. Um, I'm actually working right now with Two Rivers on a hazard mitigation grant for FEMA to deal with exactly that. That's the way I look at that every day. What's going to happen if we if we have another storm? We had one April 2019. We did a, there was a lot of damage. What's not working for infrastructure, and how do we prepare that? The same thing with the big 2.8 million dollar water project that we just did. Not this next summer, but the summer after, we'll be doing a 1.7 million because of all the water loss that you're you know we're pumping you know using electricity to pump water that's you know flowing out because you know the water system is so aged and, and is not being repaired so looking at those things looking at the town garage that was a project that we started looking at last year and saying okay what can i reuse that's existing there so i don't have to you know if we're going to increase our footprint but how can we do it what can we reuse for materials that we already have what's the weight load on the roof can we add solar can we not that sort of thing and and um, you know we know we have charging stations at the at the new park that the, the state put in they have charging some charging ability down there I guess but certainly looking at it and that's what I look at it is kind of the nuts and bolts and, it, and it's in everything we do from you know certainly in the road department you know for, and, and water sewer from from ditching and putting gravel on roads to inserting new culverts to how we're going to deal with it to not even allowing people maybe to have as much impervious surface so that we can, you know, certainly have talked to that, about that to the planning commission and, and things. So I think that you're right. I think that the battle is going to be won or lost in the nuts and bolts. And um, certainly um, that's something that, you know, we're always looking for and trying to figure out a, a better way to mitigate or to save. And we do participate in a net metering right now. The state has, or, or Bethel has for the since before I came for several years. So, um, and kind of taking a look, I know the Energy Committee uh, was tasked with that for a while and was going around and looking at all the town buildings, what could support, you know, solar, um, you know, panels or, or that sort of thing. So I know that even the Energy Committee has been on that. And, and to your point, including, you know, increasing weatherization, how can we make things more tight? We emptied out the basement and town hall was the or town office it was old creamery and we just insulated you know the basement of town hall because and i'm gonna have to put a new roof on this year because of those things but it's all you know certainly in the nuts and bolts of it and and i think town plan did a nice job but the conservation commission and energy commission in, in particular did some really nice work on their sections and um so i think that it's been a nice driving document for zoning zoning regulations and, and the select board in general too so um, and you know, and uh, usually, I mean, boards are made up differently everywhere. I mean, you'll have boards where you have five people that all have five different agendas, right? You know, I, I like to think that our board is is a pretty good board, one of which listens to the people, and and you know, we're you know, for the most part, you know, things like a non-binding resolution that that took place five years ago. You know, that's information that has come from the townspeople saying, this is what we want you to do, which is us, you know, so that when we are putting, like Therese was just saying, doing these futuristic projects, that we encompass that into that. And that, I think that's what we try to do. Now, we probably personally, all five of us probably have slightly different views on just like anything, right? We all, you know, but we always seem to come together, you know, commonly. Um, to make things happen, and um, so I don't know if we actually have like a our 100% stand is one one thing, but it is 
to listen to the community, which we have done in the past, and and make sure that our projects that we do, you know, have that in it. And Lindley? Yeah, um, Danny, I really appreciate that you asked as bluntly as you did. Um, I absolutely see this an emergency. And I think about it daily. I incorporate things into my life practices, and I see it very much as part of my representation on this board. I spend a lot of time, both, both in my business and my personal life, adjusting my own practices. And now I'm in a position where I work with students and I ask them to question the same things that I question. I don't tell them what to do, but I help them see you know, what's, what's around them. And I think that very much for me, I see my representation and on this board as a piece of that. And I think we, we do put it into the, into the mix. Could we do better? Absolutely. Could we do more? Absolutely. I think every single person in this nation, in this world, should be questioning it in a bigger, deeper level than we are and, and changing our daily practices, changing so much more. But I, I do think that, I do think it's an emergency. And I do, like, I think, and this is sort of where I was going with my question to Mary was, I really respect the Conservation Commission and I want them to have a way in, but I think that this board putting its weight behind a resolution like this it speaks volumes, and to hold it up or not sign it or not put our names behind it because we want to give everyone a say or get the words perfect, we shoot ourselves in the foot. And we do it time and time again where it's not perfect, it's not exact, it's not the right thing, or we could tweak this a little more and then we get, we get no year, nowhere and we get 10 years down the road and we're in the same spot we were in, but now it's worse. And I don't think we have 10 years. I don't think, I think change needs to be much more immediate. I think our state is, Seeing that in acting and can be a leader, and I, you know, I, I think Chris's point earlier is, is apt that we can do all these things, and if all the states around us do nothing, then we're, we're on a limb by ourselves. But I think that John also made a point of nations that are worlds ahead of us and nations that are worlds behind us. And at the end of this, do we want to be seen as a contributor to the failure or? we made our effort or we tried and we made some inroads and maybe it wasn't perfect and we faltered or we you know, made some bad choices or had the wrong language in here, but if we sit on our hands debating it out, we're also, we're losing, period. One, one thing, first, every time we come to a meeting, uh, filled with gratitude for each one of you and the, and the time and the effort that you put into, and it's not a perfect process, but it, if, if people aren't trying their best, and I think when we come back to the thing about where, where we are, it's also very clear that the major impact on the climate since the birth of the Industrial Revolution is about the United States of America. We have, where all these countries like China, yeah, they're starting a coal plant or something, but they're also, you know, they've, They've, the, the total amount of the impact of that is tiny. I, I want to just, in the idea form here, very quickly, too, there's something very exciting, I'm sure you're aware of it, but both Lebanon and Hanover are creating cooperative electrical um, companies within their towns. Oh, I can help that. Very, a piece maybe two, three weeks ago in the Valley News. Wow. And that people uh, have an opportunity to, if they, if they, you know, like what is Liberty Energy is, I guess the New Hampshire one. But the, if if you want, if you want the same supply, basically the Vesco, the regional grid feed, you'll pay 10 percent less than if you're a Liberty customer, if you're a Levin Co-op electrical customer. Hanover, same deal. If you're willing to pay a little bit more, they will contract for 50% of the electrons that go to your house are from renewable sources. If you want to pay a little bit more, you can have 100% of the electricity coming to your house. And, but the real thing is, because it's a cooperative, the profits can go to schools, they can go to you know, the, 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 the we, I feel very strongly, not, I'm back to resilience and sustainability, 
We need to bring down the costs for everyone, and we also need to make sure that when the next super storm, and it's, they're coming, comes, that when we're, I think, we need to be able to break down into smaller microgrids, be it Bethel, be it Rochester, be it South Royalton, and be able to contribute to the bigger grid, but also to be able to, after Sandy, the next day was a jewel of the day. And anyone who had panels, there was electricity being generated. Well, you know, as a community, as a state, we should be making this stuff so it's not, you know, not get lost in all of the weeds of this, that, and the next thing. But what is the, what is the way in which we can say, no, we want to, or rather say yes, we want to be able to control the way energy is produced and, and shared, and that this is, you know, that this is a, a cooperative, we're all in this boat rowing together. But the cities, the, I was at um, a select board meeting um, when we were talking about the new garage or, or whatnot, and I just remember there was a lot of talk about electric vehicles and, and uh, you know, EV charging and solar panels and whatnot. So I feel like this select board group does have their finger on the pulse about um, about all that stuff and and you know is paying attention um, to the climate change and everything. Um, so so I feel like the select board here tonight saying declaring um, you know in a non-binding way. I think that's what it is. Um, to get behind these, the climate policy, you know, points here, I don't feel like it would be, uh, you know, a stretch or, or um, you know, whatnot. I don't, I don't feel like anybody's dismissive of any of these points and, and everybody feels like these points are real and good. Um, and so with this deadline on Friday, <clears throat> that you know you guys need to come up with this statement um, I feel that the Conservation Commission does recommend to get behind for the recommend the town and to get behind this and for the select board to declare that whether we are in our meeting tomorrow um, you know, we see some other things and some other changes that we recommend to the state. I do feel like we recommend you guys declare to get behind this here tonight. And, and as a Bethel citizen, um, I do hope you guys declare that. So. How many do you guys you may know if the select board does it there? Then the Right. From the Conservation Commission, if you make your, you know, you guys make your changes or desires known, and, and you send that to the state, and then exactly. if the select board does theirs, I mean, it's, yeah. the more people they hear from, the better you know, right. it's going to be. Nothing worse than working in a bubble or a vacuum. So. Yeah, I, I just want to add my my voice to encourage you to pass the resolution or approve the resolution, whatever you guys do here formally. Um, I think the hard work then begins. We've all been listening, those of us that are <clears throat> some decades old, and listening to this for decades and decades, right? There's a problem, we need to ad address this, we need to act, and we haven't done anything. So hopefully out of this resolution, there will become action, and it's not gonna be easy because you're gonna feel you're putting out more than maybe another town or another part of the country. But if we don't start to act, we don't actually list actions and act on them thoughtfully and not 2050, let's just start. Because 2050 gives us a pass, right? It gives us another, my, my kids will be doing it in 2050. Um, so I think we have to act. I heard something earlier, you know, there's, uh, it would be thousands of dollars 
uh, I don't know, water, uh, reef retrofitting of this, that, or the other. Okay, well, then figure it out. How many thousands of dollars? Is it $52,800? How many, how are you gonna find the money? Are we gonna raise the money? You've got these wealthy people, myself included, coming into Bethel. Mm -hmm. I bought property. I was one of the people from out of state. I've put lots of money into my house, paid lots of salaries doing that. Uh, my kids have worked, provided, you know, hands on the ground in the last summers and so so on. So there's there's benefit there, but how are we gonna raise the money so that you can maintain the lifestyle and the wonderful community that you have? Mm -hmm. Like, let's figure it out. It's, it's not unsolvable unless we don't act. And that's true. There's also, too, the fact that some of this is, is really the state. That, you know, <clears throat> people don't necessarily understand that Vermont is a Dillon's rule state. So meaning that the state of Vermont is a Dillon's rule state means that the towns only have the authority granted to it by the state. So, you know, a lot of this is, you know, certainly recommendations to the state. They'll do what they do and then and then it'll, you know, fall to us to do what we do. But, um, but certainly, you know, that's in a broader sense. You're right. I mean, it's basically a message to the state for them to figure it out what they're going to do. Well, I think, but I think we can probably take it a step further. So possibly. Um, I would say, well, Mom, if I needed something done, I want to work on my farm now. It's me. I got to figure out how to do it. I've yeah. learned all sorts of things about the hammer and nail and drills and right. So, so we can do the same thing. Yeah. We can physically help people with or winterize their houses. Oh, absolutely. Right. We I can mean, do I, some of these. So, 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 so the resolution is the is the aspirational thing, and then yeah. the hard work is is the part that's going to have to require. Yeah, and it's just not a letter too, just to say it. It just is a um, recommend this. It's a, it's a the vote would be the select board to endorse a statement right. to the Climate Action Council. There's a section here um, about a proposed action for climate change, um, about the select board developing a plan for the town of Bethel, which is, you know, so, and that's something that maybe if they, that certainly could be discussed at a, at a town meeting or in the future too, to figure out how they're gonna make that work because that's a big, a big action. But certainly at this point, it's just a, it's just, it's a select board endorsing a statement that goes to the mock line. If I could jump in for a second. Um, I wanted to thank Gene for putting this roundtable discussion together on such short notice. Um, so that's a, a good effort on, <clears throat> on your part, Gene, to do that. I think this is everything we're speaking about. It's all it's well and good. And we know that things have to change. Um, not for my generation. You know, I won't be around probably when <clears throat> when all this happens. But I was with my grandkids this weekend, and and it's going to be their lot to to deal with. Um, so we need to start somewhere. Uh, definitely. My only question about this particular document that we are looking at is, you know, we've all read the. The law. I'm sure we went on, we looked at the law, we saw the breakdown of the committee and, and all the various representatives that are going to be on this, 23 different people that are going to be on this council. And I wonder whether or not we, as a select board, if we adopt this document, if we are in fact aligning ourselves with 350 Vermont, which is a, an independent you know, uh, individual, uh, not uh, individual, it's a, a separate group, it's a special interest group, one of many special interest groups that are going to be asking their, to get their agenda into the conversation for what's going to result in the, in the final document. So I'm, I wonder if we want to, as a select board, we are a government entity, we're not just a group of people where actual government uh, entity will choose to align, if we would be aligning ourselves with this particular group if we adopt their uh, set of what, nine different points here, as opposed to creating our own. The last three points that were added on were tremendous. The first three, yeah. No, the, the three, the proposed action, uh, one, okay, two, no. and three. In the um, in the statement from one through twelve, right, the first three were added to 
the statement from Vermont 50, 350 Vermont. Okay, I thought so you were talking items, about the, the proposed action no, or the final statement. Items 3 through 12 yeah. are the comments from 350 Vermont. Okay, all right. Now, but that's I, my, and I understand yeah. the way this is written is that what we would act on is the way it's written mm -hmm. is we would support these ideas mm -hmm. and we're not supporting 350 Vermont. Well, that's so I just wanted to throw that out there for a point of this. So if you removed the items three through 12 mm -hmm. from here. Three mm -hmm. through 12 mm -hmm. or four through 12? Four through 12, I'm okay. sorry. Yep. This here is... Is this the ANR statement? It, yeah, I, I don't know if it's ANR, but it is Natural Resources Council. Oh, okay. This, okay. Is, this is their priorities. Which we haven't... This is great. Right. Thank so you. So here's some other... So what, 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 I, was, what I was getting at... Yeah. Please, if I could finish. Yeah, please. Yeah. Is there are, there are multiples of, of yep. groups that were looking to, you know, like I said, have their agenda included mm -hmm. in the process. So do we tie ourselves into a position by adopting the ones, you know, this, the, the majority of the ones that, are, that we're looking at in this document from 350? Does that uh, in any way tie us or, uh, you know, into, into their position? Because, it, you know, if you go, go on their website, so everybody went on their website and looked and, and saw uh, they're active across the country. Um, in, in any state that, that has these kind of issues. Where it looks like this one that he, that um, Farron just gave you is the Vermont Natural Resources Council, and it's the Vermont Natural Resources um, Climate Council priorities. And um, so they, you know, so that's a possibility too, is you can endorse this. Well, I, I definitely, when I had was reading through it, I mean, the first thing when endorsing something is That's try to endorse something that isn't tagged to something else because you could get yourself, you know, maybe as perceived as following a certain group or whatever. Uh, where now, look, you know, I haven't had a chance to go through the whole um, national resources um, piece of it, but I had circled that, you know, could we, you know, if we adopt these points, could we just take out any reference to other, I mean, it's okay, you can copy pieces of theirs and plug it in there, but as long as we don't have a tag to it, you know. Um, that was one of my thoughts, and I guess, you know, I, I, the way I like to work is I'm very thorough, um, and when I don't have a lot of time, it makes my thing go nuts, so. Um, <clears throat> Of course, a piece of me of my whole life is I send out letters all the time to my representatives, and I don't think it ever changes anything. So um, that's just me. Um, but looking through this as like the minded person I am, um, what I had quickly done is like I I like the proposed action plans for the town, but not necessarily put them in the letter. But but those would be great to like hand to the Energy Committee, Co Conservation Committee, and say, what do we think about this? Or, you know, I think it's a great starter. Like, what, what yeah. What you propose to is to the 12 points yep. that I had won are what we would send to the climate yeah. and, and then not, the And not, nothing else. And I guess this, this is just on my end and knowing um, information of the petroleum and of business, because um, that's what I'm in, anyways, is, you know, never, never say never, like, you know, you know, like, you know, so I guess the bullet point for me that was, that I had looked at was, you know, taking natural gas completely off the table, saying, saying it's not an option, which I think we have to come, like, I'm a realist, so you have to come to a reality at some point that natural gas is a waste end of petroleum. And you're going to continue to pump petroleum out of the ground unless you want to scrap every plastic thing we have on this earth overnight and tires and everything else. Which, so, so I guess my opinion is, so I guess my opinion was, I see natural gas as a, 
potential waste product of something that we are going to continue to use, but maybe not at the volume of, you know, like heat and oil and all that stuff. But just never say never because you never know when you might use it. So my, my so risk, the, real, the real issue you have is if you allocate billions and millions of dollars for infrastructure so that you're going to, that infrastructure is going to be with us for 30, 50 years. And if you're doing it for natural gas, frack gas and stuff, <laughs> we're cooked. You know, so in other words, you have to start drawing some more. But, but again, I think on my, and this is just my opinion, but there's always the, there's got to be the practicality portion of this. Like, yeah. yes, yeah. overnight, if we could flick a switch and go to all this, that would be great. But we have to be practical here on. So take number nine out. Like, like, let's say overnight, like, overnight we went from, you know, heating oil and stuff like that to electric vehicles, and let's say we are heating our homes with natural gas, right? Overnight we've changed our footprint dramatically, right? It may not be 100% to where we want to be, but it's much better than where we were. But to say, like, we're just going to, you know. So, so take number nine out. Four. What else did you have? Maybe that's what we need to do <laughs> to get through this, is to go through yes. item by item. Yeah. Well, I know on my end, like, I, I'm not ready to no, endorse it because I haven't read it. So no, after you read but, it. After you read it. Yeah. And, and this is what drives me nuts is, you know, we're being tasked to do something when we haven't had the... Like, we all agree tonight that something needs to be done and we need to put our stamp on something, you know. But but we have to be careful what we put our stamp on, too, because... Does it have to be in detail? Well, that's what I'm wondering. Like, can it be more of a detail? You know, eliminate. Like you don't like a statement of. Well, and I guess I, I was going to yeah. sort of trying to solve the conundrum with Mary, not that it's your issue, you just brought it up. So I'm going to pick up. I like a good discussion. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, just wondering if there's a way, and this is where Therese will keep me in line. Um, is there a way for this board to make a motion tonight that then allows the Conservation Commission to have this discussion tomorrow? and sort of do that s same sort of endorsement, but be a little more thorough with it. And if we as select board members want to join their meeting tomorrow and be a part of that discussion, we could, mm -hmm. um, you know, but just is there is there sort of a mechanism where we can actually make this happen and give them some way in without just sure. letting the opportunities sort of slip by? I think that you could make a motion, that the select board could make a motion to endorse the Conservation Commission's response to the Vermont climate change on behalf of the town of Bethel. I think that you could easily make a motion and kick it to them, and then they will, you have endorsed as board the uh, submission of the Conservation Commission to represent the, for the town of Bethel. I think you could easily I think do I, it. I kind of agree with Paul that I don't want to necessarily align with an organization that I haven't done deep and thorough research on, but I also feel like the Vermont Natural Resources Council has, it, especially has like Farron is saying, it's very, they're very similar, but mm -hmm. I also would feel more comfortable backing them versus uh, an independent organization that I am not as familiar with, right? And I have looked into, for, you know, the 350 org, I'm just saying as a, as a whole. Um, yeah, I think that's a practical way to do it, is you're not and you're endorsing that the town is on whether the town or the select board acts on what's going further there's already caveats in the town plan of things to work on if they want to do more obviously that they can but you can certainly throw your weight behind the recommendation of that and then when mary or whomever types up theirs they could add type out the names of the select board members as well so then they're submitting and i think it would be very important to have the select board participation yeah but well, i think we had you know, Gene had this meeting to put together folks, and mm -hmm. they did their due diligence and came up with these three, uh, three first three. Uh, you could have the. And I think those have the know, conservation commission. Those should be them. part of the be part of the response because that that is input from yeah. the various folks that were there at that meeting. That's a great idea. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I thought those were still no. from yeah. the uh, 350. So I would. And, and then the action plans that. 
you know, that they suggest it can be discussed, uh, you know, at a future time of, yeah. uh, for the select board to take action on. So, I think that's I, a great I would, idea. I would suggest uh, uh, <laughs> that we would uh, communicate to the Climate Council points one, two, and three. Which document? Of the climate, the climate the one action the, report. The one that was in the packet. The first three items the are. The first the, three items that came out of the conversation with the group about two weeks or a week ago. On Monday. And you These are there, right? not 350 yeah. Vermont. Yeah. Right, right. And so I would, I would suggest that we do that and uh, endorse what the here, these com Mary. commission one. comes up with. This here? Tomorrow. Yeah, only the first three points. Uh, Did you get this? I think so, yes. It was the, in the packet. Yeah, the first the, team is saying the, these three points that they that they were not that one. Considered. The, 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 the conservation consider, commission yeah. is okay, meeting right tomorrow, there. right? And that you you can take this whole thing up, and that this. So I'm suggesting that we as a select board, support the first three state statements because those came out of the group Monday. And we would, with the same motion or a second or a different one, support the work of the Conservation Commission tomorrow. There you go. Well, what, what is the Conservation Commission thinking? About the I mean, you must kind of know what your conversation is going to feel like right now. I mean, what what is that? I mean, recommend, you know, backing, yeah. okay. um, you know, the policy. Of the know, national national yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, like I said, they're so similar. They're very, the that, three bullet points, Gene, those three are also in the BNRC yes. plan. They're, it's just different wording. Okay, I, I understand, but I'm, I would like <laughs> for tonight. Yeah, oh, I, see. I would yeah. like the select board to say we want the cost of this to be borne equitably or with consideration for those who do not have resources. Yeah. First point, we would like your plan to support local communities as they develop plans and put them into action with funding, and three, that we encourage the board of edu the, our school board to work, or that they provide support for schools so that schools are, continue to provide education around climate action, that is, act, that it is action focused and not problem focused. So your motion would be that my, the select so board. Select my motion group. would be that the select board endorse items one, two, and three, and that we would support the work of the Conservation Commission as they address climate change at their next meeting. I move it. The only, the only and it's, no, don't take any offense to this, please. But the only, the only thing that's hard for me to, to get behind that is it's kind of like sending my, not saying you would, like sending my daughters down to the grocery store with a blank check, right? Like, what are they gonna buy when they're there? Because I've already endorsed the check, you know? You know, so it's kind of, it's like not seeing it, you know? Not seeing it and endorsing it before I get to see it in hopes that it'll be aligned. Well, I didn't use the word endorse. <laughs> so I'm just, so I'm just kind of like, I, I guess the mission tonight is either either endorse this or their support, yeah, in an amended version or this version or not, because I don't know if I can get behind something that hasn't happened yet. Well, you have a motion, so you need a second. I know, but we can talk about it. Council as there and the Conservation Commission. The, the, I mean, I think that we're all we're all rowing in the same direction. I know. Well, you know how it is nowadays. 
You could be you think you're rowing in the right direction, and all of a sudden your boat goes a different direction. <laughs> and then they're like, well, you guys endorsed that. I'm so. president of the Conservation Commission. You could also change the first sentence if you were concerned about that. You could just say, considers the ability to pay and availability of financial resources when developing tax and other ways to pay for the transition to net zero emissions by 2050, 2050 period. You don't have to, or you can, then you could leave the part um, state funding and support are critical. You could, you don't have to tell them about a progressive income tax schedule rather than property taxes if you don't want to. I guess what I'm saying is you could send your message without telling, because they're going to figure out how to do it anyway. So you could remove that sentence if that's what, if that's what, if you don't like that portion, Chris. If you want to, um, uh, uh, if you want to change it so that you can support it. It's just a thought. Yeah, there's still a motion, yeah. No, not yet. So the motion is, Jean, move to support items one, two, and three and support the work of the Conservation Commission as they address climate change at their next meeting. That's Jean's motion. I'm willing to second it. I feel like it's gonna get hung up on this detail of these are two, maybe two separate concepts, the, the first three and Divide. the support. So should we? redo the motion like maybe this is just a straw poll of board members of is there support if we move the motion as is or would it be better to separate the two let's separate do you want to re-motion i will uh, withdraw that motion and, and uh, move that we uh, endorse and send to the climate council points one two and three Any further discussion on it before we? How vote? how would we do that? In what form would we do we that? We basically send a letter or go through the uh, the website of the council to provide that input to the board. I can type it in. Would we put in this first paragraph that no, says the just, select board at Bethel, Vermont, duly called meeting held on October 11th, et yes. cetera, et cetera? And then points one, two, and three. And yeah, and, and include points one, two, and three. I can do As that. As opposed to including this in with the Conservation Commission's recommendations from. It, right now we're separating. Okay. Yes. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure I have that right. So Jean moved, Lindley seconded to endorse items one, two, and three and send to the climate change. Uh, Vermont Climate Council, I mean, sorry, I had the wrong Vermont Climate Council. Climate Council, is that right? That good, Jean? That? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any further discussion on it? So, motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Well, you guys had the motion. You need the other eyes. Eyes or nose? Yeah, I, I think the wording is troubling me on some of them. I'd have to say no. Dave? No, because I have some other questions that, that go way beyond what we were talking about. Everybody wants to say stuff to happen, but I've been in Vermont for a lot longer than most any of you, not probably any of you. And I see a lot of things that we'd like to have Vermont do. And until someone can come up and tell me how the hell they're going to do it, I'm not going. To, I can't get behind anything because they, we want to do this, we want to do that, and we're going. To, we're going to have it. We're going to have uh, broadband. We're going to have broadband in 2012. We're going to have it in 2015. We're going to have it in 2018. We're going to have it in 2020. It's still not there. Well, some I can people show, I'm taking to Tumbridge and show you some people that have no broadband. Uh, of course, we're making progress. Yeah. You don't just you put your hands or sell service. That's what you're saying. Yeah. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying at least if you buy 2012, we'll do it. 2015, we'll be done. 2018, we'll be done. How are we? That's aspirational. We might be done and get it done next year. I would like to see someone in an electric car load up the shit and I put in my vehicle to be an electrician and drive around at 20 below and fix your electric heater. What happened? 
So let's just stay on task. We, I mean, I. I'm sorry. You asked me. Yeah. No. No. I'm, I'm just. Um, I mean, I. Let, let me clarify my position. I'm not saying that these bullet points aren't valuable and are on good points. I think, though, that as a select board, we're in a much different position doing it this way than endorsing these points to be included through the Conservation Commission's consideration with their uh, meeting tomorrow night looking at the VNRC. I think we're in a totally different position. We're not, we're not just a group of people coming up with an opinion. We're a government entity, so we have to be very careful about how we identify ourselves. Because the next selects board that, that's in place, you know, in March we have two, two openings. Next year we're gonna have two more openings. Things are gonna change even before the first review of this whole process by the, by the council. There's gonna be a different select board here. So we have to be very careful <clears throat> how we how we identify, and we, we talk about this a lot, not just for this, but every time we have a certain <clears throat> situation that arises, we have to think about what happens down the road, um, as well as what's happening right now. So my position, I mean, I think these points are valuable. I like the, the research and the input that went into them, but I don't think that as a select board, we want to get into that locked in position. But if we go through the, the Conservation Commission and their consideration, we're endorsing it by a resolution type thing as opposed to being locked in as a select board saying, this, this is what we want, bang, bang, bang. So that's, that's I'm gonna clarify my position. That's why I'm voting no as a technicality, not as necessarily a, a disbelief in the, in the uh, suggestion. So just as a straw poll, so then you would vote the, so if this motion goes down, then but you would make a, a motion to support the? Yes. Okay. The Conservation Commission and the, okay. Uh, I'm just curious. That's, so you're, I would like to explain my, <laughs> my <laughs> rationale for making the motion from the select board is that I think what we are, we are not saying that this is the way it has to be. We are simply saying when the Climate Council develops its action plan, which it is required by law to do, that it consider these three points. We're not binding ourselves to those three points. We are simply saying that the town, it will benefit the town of Bethel if we were to support these three, if we were to convey our support, these three ideas to the Climate Council, the, uh, I think it is more impactful if it comes from the select board speaking for the town. <coughs> I think we are doing that based on town meeting uh, poll that says we should get behind climate change I think we are doing it in support of the town plan that includes climate change uh, as part of Bethel's, uh, the direction we're going. I think it is consistent with what the people of the community have said. I think it is important that the select board, as the select board, uh, speak. That's my rationale for making the motion that the select board do this and that we. So also just tell you, I just wanted, since we're trying to do our hybrid thing here, that Liley says, I'd also like to see the select board sign the resolution. I agree it's aspirational and an important step. So I just wanted to, you know, trying to deal with our hybrid stuff. So <laughs> Liley had messaged a minute ago. One, one little thing on the sentiment of, um, I heard it earlier, of, you know, if we get behind this thing, then we're making all this effort and maybe other towns aren't. So, you know, why, what was the point? Um, you know, I feel like in my experience in the business world and work world, the people who work more, do more, get ahead faster. And I think there's also a lot of value in, um, in you know, getting behind this 
in that it shows that we're a community that does care about you know this and care about the welfare of the community and all that and that can be a, a real attractive feature for a town and community. I, I would like to know what is the liability that you face by endorsing something that is, um, I mean, it's not super specific. Um, it talks about considering the ability. The, these are all words that, I mean, I don't know, Paul, are you think you're gonna, the town's gonna get sued if? if no, <laughs> no, I think we're not saying policy. You know, we're not passing an ordinance, we're not doing policy or anything that's, you know, in concrete ad infinitum. But I think it does leave the impression that future select boards <clears throat> would need to stay in the same path and we can't bind them to that. Well, you are. You, you, well, it, yeah, but then that's that. You know, that's not going to happen because this is this is a snowball that's getting started and it needs to keep going. So the chances of that happening, I would think, are pretty slim. Uh, well, if that's, that's the whole I'm, point. <laughs> no, that's the whole point. I know. I know. But so I it has to start somewhere. Okay, you know? so hold on. So first we have to I'm just I'm sorry. set the rules back. Mm -hmm. um, so just remember, it's a select board meeting. It is a meeting of the select board. The community does have input, and we give you lots of input, trust My me. My apologies. Um, so just... As we bicker back and forth, which which is actually kind of fun tonight, we don't usually bicker back and forth. So it's kind of like a cool thing. Like I'm sitting here, like you know, what can I do to like really piss them off, and you know, what, and, you know, but it's but usually, you know, I will say that this board, for the most part, you know, we you know we are humans and we all have our different things, but we we do come together, and you know, it, it's kind of a neat discussion that we're having tonight. That uh, you know, we we seem to be in some different areas, but we seem to be. The longer we're talking, we're coming closer to something here. So, um, I, well, yeah, yeah, possibility would be for yeah. New York State, and we have a tie vote, and we simply communicate that the select board in Bethel could not reach a decision. We had a tie vote on these three issues. I'm not sure if that sends the message you want to send. That yeah. you well, I'm not sure it does either. I'm just I'm trying well, to. Well, maybe what the deal is uh, is if you have a tie, you currently have a tie vote. Is you have a couple options here, which is one is um, you just you you drop it, I guess, or Chris votes one way or the other and breaks a tie, which is never pleasant. But you break a tie and then it goes that way. Or <clears throat> is there language? Is there something? In the, which is fine, Chris can vote and tie it and break the tie and that'll be the decision. Or you can, is there a way you can backtrack a little bit and make it more palatable so that everybody is willing to support it? That, that I don't know either. As if you put the wording in that maybe that this says it's a non-binding or something that I'm not sure what would, because I understand your sentiment, Paul, is no select board likes to tie the hands of future select boards. It, it's, it's just a general practice. I can understand that, and I'm not sure if there's something to make it more palatable either way, or there's votes and the ties to tie. Mm -hmm. It's not even setting any sort of precedent other than we've said something, and just as much as we could say, we want to build a town garage that is XYZ energy efficiency, if we don't make the motion to actually approve the contract or the next select board that comes in could scrap that all. It, it, I mean, it's it's no in no way binding, and I'm I'm a little bit confused because you started your statement almost really feeling like you really supported this, and your only issue was maybe, maybe not supporting 350 VT. That's why I clarified my point. I I I am in support of the three items going in through that direction instead of this direction. It's a technicality. That's all. So before I vote, what does the board, I know we have, we have a motion on the table and it's been seconded, and so it's either a yes or no on my part now, unless we can reach some sort of agreement. 
So I was just playing around with some numbers, not numbers, the wordage here. Just trying to make sure that everybody still has an opportunity to weigh into this, and it gives us now. We an need out, it to be the best right? possible expression. So, I mean, if we, if we say the select board of Bethel, Vermont, at a duly called meeting held on October 11th, um, took a non-binding vote to ask the Vermont Climate Council to consider the following three points, as well as future considerations by our town conservation and energy commissions. It, it, it doesn't say that, you know, I guess it kind of gives some recognition to our committees, even though they haven't formally put together their own response. Um, so it does kind of like we're behind them on what they do. Um, but it also moves the three points forward. Can you say that again, Chris? Um, so it, it just, um, so the select board of Bethel, Vermont at a duly called meeting held on October 11th um, took a non-binding vote to ask the Vermont Climate Council to consider the following three points, which are one, two, and three, as well as as well as any future consider consideration, as well as any future considerations by our town conservation and energy commissions. I mean, is that because then it any future recommendations? I would withdraw my motion. Well, I'm just wondering. I mean, we can have that discussion. Like, do we think mm -hmm. that, that kind of gets us in the middle, and we can yes, do our thing, and I mean, gives us. Gives us a document to go and do something with, and I mean, probably no document that we're going to come up with something perfect, mm -hmm. but it gets some points out there, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So, Secretary, non binding vote to consider the following three points. And it also well. means that I mean, you guys could have your meeting tomorrow. Well, I mean, you are having a meeting tomorrow, but you could come up with some points that maybe blend with that one, you could bring it to us and say, what do you think? We'd like to send this later, this letter in late in the process, but at least we're, you know, or, or we agree 100% or, you know, what do you think if we added this? I don't know, but. So, okay, I've read this 50 times now, and uh, what you just, now I can't go with what you just said, but I can go with those three points that we, because I, I keep reading them and keep reading them. They are ambiguous enough so they aren't, they aren't asking for things that offend me that I know the state's not gonna do, okay? But what was causing me to say no isn't in those three points. But so you use Chris's wording that you're saying to consider. Except for now, now even from his words, do I want to get behind something that I haven't seen? Yeah, but just, I mean. You're only now saying, I, I mean, I'll, as well proposal. as consideration of comments submitted by. So you're just asking them for consideration of the comments that the conservation is going to know, which you know is going to pretty tightly adhere to the VNRC recommendation. So you're only asking for consideration and, for their comments. And I'm only thinking of that as this, this is going to be, I mean, even though they want something in by a certain date, this is going to be an ongoing discussion for quite some time. And there probably will be some other opportunities to put some buy-in here. So if all of a sudden, let's say the Energy Commission puts together some sort of draft, you know, based on, you know, X amount of points or whatever. And we are only advising you Mm -hmm. That's right. true. I mean, it's going to come. Dave I mean, has to listen right. to what any we say or any of you guys do. Right. We just. We advise. No. But any, any communication that they would send to this board, we would get it first. I like the way that's worded. Um, okay. I can go along with that. Are you okay with that, Dave? Are you still. Yeah, I can, I can live with that. I, yeah. I'm not. Yeah, I got some reservations about pieces, parts here, but just do it that way. I, can, I, I mean, it is a little different because typically our board is, you know, we're either. Um, you know, weighing in on policy or, um, you know, on something like that, but not typically, rec you know, putting a board endorsement on something other than maybe like a grant application or something like that. I mean, we don't usually, we don't usually do that. Usually something like this comes at, you know, town meeting day or, you know. This is, this is still in its philosophy stage. Right, yeah. Uh, the whole right. process. Okay, so Gene withdrew his motion. 
said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Okay. okay. So we got sec we second call in favor. We don't have a second. No. Oh, no. Like, oh, 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 sorry. Yeah, I didn't right. hear him. Like, this this gaggy group was laughing over me. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Perfect. Yes, Wonderful. Yes. I think this is really practical moment. We're in crisis. This is not sort of kicking something down the road, but the planet in this moment, and I go back to in 2009, we had my mother, she was 94, something like that, and we knew we couldn't keep her forever. So we knew if we didn't get rid of the oil to heat the house, and at that point, Oakofin and the pellet, you know, the wood pellet boilers were around. There was zero rebates from the state. And the back of the envelope said, if we just burned oil for one more winter, it would take us 17 years of burning wood pellets in that furnace to equal that. And I didn't want to do that. That meant fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000, which we didn't have. To, but to do it, to know that then we had 17 years, we were like, you know, that we were taking a big step that was a stretch for us, but, you know, and that's what we all need to do, individually, as communities, as a nation, as the world. Otherwise, we ain't got a home. Yeah, I would just recommend to make sure you, you know, reach out to your local representatives to stress the you know, the more local points of how that, you know, affects little, you know, me and Bethel and how do I, whatever, pay for it, get to the stage, you know, because we know how this is, all of a sudden it's adopted and you have to do it by a certain date and by the way, we're not giving you money, we're not helping you do this, you know, and then you're sitting there going, well, I can't afford that, like, you know what I mean, so. <laughs> so it's kind of, you know, make sure that those points are made to our local legislators because. You guys rock. So. Thank you, folks, for all your input. Good, healthy discussion. We all, you know, are guilty of hypocrisy, right? When we talk about these aspirational things and what, you know, we want all this, and yet, I mean, I'm a carpenter. He's a carpenter. So when it says banning logging, I mean, obviously it says large scale logging, but I, you know, I can't. We don't want to ban logging. We need logs to build our houses. And people need houses, and that's going to continue. And I, I, I'm still heating with natural gas. I bought a furnace not that long ago, and I can't afford to just yank it all out. And, and I got big trees around the house. I'm not going to cut them down for solar either. <laughs> I like my trees. Right. So, you know, we're all in this together, and we're not. You know, I, I understand where you're coming from, and you're coming from. You know, all of us where we're coming from. And we just, you know, got to do the best we can. And, I must also say, I thank you. Good night, Mary. Thank you. Yeah, well, it's coming. You know, they really give me the vibe. We're going to have to postpone the meeting and go watch Sox game. I would like to. You have like dinner. Enough with your dinner. Socks are on. I want to Sox around tonight. They're right now. Yeah, they're up 5 1. I want to thank the select board. Thank you, I want to thank the select board and I want to request that the action items be put on a future for discussion at least uh, on our next uh, meeting. I'm not sure it'll go on the next one. I have well, to look at what's out there pending. Well, but we can definitely those action items should be uh, sent to both the energy and You've conservation got the action commissions. Action Right? I do. Mm -hmm. yeah. But those so, would be good for them to work on. So also, I would yeah. suggest that we at least discuss those in a future meeting. Yep, mm -hmm. action items one through three. All right, I got it, Gene. And he's requesting that we start that particular meeting at 4 p.m. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. amen. Okay. I don't know, Dave, when you weren't here, there were pretty quick meetings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had one before 7 o'clock. I yeah. move. We adjourn. You no, no, we're not done. Yet. Oh, we're not done. No. Okay. You still haven't finished the adjournment. It all depends on how fast trees. Yeah, it's going to be fast. All right, you got 30 seconds. Go. 
Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. See you later. Yeah. Thank hey, you. Hey, Karen, you should, you're going to want to know this. Application today that the VORC, that half million dollar oh. letter of intent that we wrote, um, please to notify us that our application has been reviewed and we were invited to submit a full application. Yeah. The year's pool was competitive. Our proposal stood out above 104 unique applications. So that letter of intent, I'm sorry, but I'm going to pat myself and Dietri on the back because yeah. we took a whole day to write that Does thing. Does it say like how many it's down to or like? Uh, they, let's see. So it says that they were... Um, 104, so it went from 104 to It one. says you are one of 37 applications. Okay, so it went from We are inviting to, to move. In total, the selective applications have requested $12.8 million in funding, which obviously they don't have. Um, so uh, the next thing will be how we're going to get that done. I know Jean had offered to do some work on it, Rebecca, Sam, Moore, Stone, but so far I think I have two people. I'm sure Ellie will want to way in because there was some concern of hers on behalf of that letter. Does it say when that next peak, I'm sorry, I was not think. So Does I it didn't say when the next date is? Yeah, it, it says that next week, the week sorry, of October. Sorry, brain is dry, we're done. So we're going to get a follow-up message with information on how to do it um, and when it's done. All I know is that we were, we made it. So thank you for attending that meeting. Yeah, so we, so we made it that far. So it is exciting. So also it makes, I'll make sure you share that tomorrow with conservation because, yeah. you know, uh, Chris Four was there and everything, so. Yeah, so. So, yeah, so I just got it. Yeah, so it's, it's good. Yeah, so thank you for coming to the meeting. Yeah, I'll let, so Have a we'll good see, evening, all. See you guys, thanks. So other than, thanks, good John, evening. take care. Good to see you. Yeah. Uh, so as Jean, uh, let's see, no, not Jean, Paul, there was the, uh, so good news, more good news. Two Rivers, the bylaw modernization grant, we talked about budgeting. There is no match. So we don't have, so that's great. So there's no. So you don't have to put anything in there. Good. Right, so there's no money. Uh, and how much for was that, that grant? Um, we <clears throat> wrote for 500, well, the VORC is $500,000. The bylaw modernization grant is about $8,000. 8000 Yeah, but when we, with no match right. for us. So that'll be great. Um, the not quite final DWSRF numbers that Paul wanted are in your packet. Um, still waiting, complaining as much as we can to the state. We have, you know, telling them we want more money. You opposed us going through environmental, uh, you know, that process. We want, you know, we want like another half mil. Whether we'll get it or not, I don't know, but we're going to fight for it. it. Why not? You know what? We can say, we can demand. Um, so then budget numbers, we're talking about that. Pinello Bridge is an ongoing saga. Had a meeting with the FEMA folks from the state and FEMA and the hazard mitigation program. So Chris Bump and I, he sent me a, a RFP from another town for culvert replacement. I turned it into a bridge. We put some backup stuff into it. We're trying to set, we're going to still stay with North Star Hydro. They were the ones who did the H&H &H study for the bridge, and we're also going to stay with Contech Engineering. Apparently, the person that uh, no longer <clears throat> works for the town of Bethel for, for that engineering firm had already started dealing with them. So the feds are saying, we can use them, and that helps push us a little bit further. So um, I sent that tonight uh, before the meeting to Chris Bump to have him take a peek at. So, so what Penelope type of time frame are we going. looking at? I am I mean, still... Do you even know, or? Well, the hard part is obviously Army Corps of Engineers winter, weigh in. Winter coming, so now you're looking at what, spring job maybe? Well, basically the RFP is going to say that we want final drawings and everything done by the end of February, but we have to keep FEMA in the loop because <clears throat> we have to look for bats, we have to look at historical preservation, so there's a good 60 to 90 days worth of review in there, but FEMA is saying this is the last project left out of that disaster, DR445. So they kicked us out back into, uh, back into the queue, which is fine, but they're willing to stay involved as we go, which is great. So once we get a new engineer, we'll have another FEMA meeting that way. Dr. So Downer things go well, we're looking people. like late spring or something like we're that? We're looking at, I would say, late summer um, by the time. I said if things go good. good. Yeah, <laughs> I'm still <laughs> saying late summer. But, so anyway, so we're pushing right. forward to it, uh, through it, just so you know, that's what's going on. Because, you know, again, just, the earlier we can get that out, the better opportunities we'll have uh, cost-wise because yeah. your the um, Agency of Transportation has a very robust program coming out for yeah. next year, so that, which means contractors are going to fill up yeah. quick. Well, for us, honestly, I can't control it at this point. The RFP yeah. goes out, I want a response back so we can award it. 
but and for them to do design plus it's also the review is going to take a while i think the town crew will end up removing like 10 trees um we're going to try to get a and r to come in right now their environmental or their biologists to look for bats um so anything that we can get done now is gonna but some of the stuff we just won't have control over the timing so anyways that's all i got perfect Select board meeting minutes from the 27th. Paul promised us a thorough review on those. Oh, Lynn, good. Lynn, <laughs> Lynn, 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 you made a motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. There was some other communications, just you know, some stuff for you guys to know yeah. that the revised outer loop of the trail was rerouted to avoid a, more, to avoid a vernal pool. Mm -hmm. That's just kind of you guys had to know that, so that's in there. Um, think some other minutes, um, the DWS staff numbers, some uh, information, an uh, ongoing thing on right road that we're dealing with. Um, but I'm waiting for hoping the class four road committee will schedule a meeting, they'll go up there look at that and then I want this class four road committee to make a recommendation to the select board. Then the select board can decide on the work as well as having any uh, disgruntled neighbors when would, uh, there when as well. When would that happen? I don't know. I've written to the concert, to the chair a couple of times. So of the class four road committee, I know he's been busy. So I'm hoping sooner rather than later. Okay. But in the meantime, um, it is what it is and everyone got a letter. Wait, what's going on? I'm not sure I remember. We haven't. Um, I just was something in the package, just an ongoing. Um, Did you see issue a letter in the packet? Between two. Yeah, um, they just didn't stop work. They had no idea what they were doing. Well, um, one of them had been put keeping up a water bar that we'd asked them to maintain. Um, another, the other resident um, in the area was putting in other water bars and right and um, doing other work that was. They are, and uh, that was disturbing the other, so one couldn't access his fields from the class four road. And so basically, I just don't pull that that thread on that sweater. Yeah, so we have to come unraveling right off. So I did send a a letter, turn, you know, registered letter to both parties. Have dealt with both parties at this point. That the road crew is going to go up and do um, where some water bars were dug pretty deep so that the farm equipment couldn't get into their own field. Uh, we're going to put a little gravel in there so that the water bars can still, you know, water will traverse, but at least it's, it's accessible. But I've spoken to the chair of the um, Class 4 Road Committee and asked him to, you know, put this on an agenda sooner rather than later so they can take a peek because it's a, cla it's a Class 4 road. So if they don't want to get a permit to work in the road for $125 that we can approve or disapprove, then it's tough and it's an ongoing feud. What I don't want to happen is the town is to, for an abutter to try to sue the town because we haven't made a, cho a decision. So that hence the letter saying everybody cease and desist. Nobody has the right to do anything for the policy unless.